Hey, hold up. <laughs> I was not ready for this. <laughs> Time out. What's good, people? How we doing today? Listen, today, guys, uh, oh my God. Like, I cannot contain my excitement because, listen, today, guys, listen, remember what I told you that the end of 2022 going into 2023 for this space, this manosphere space, right? Remember I told y'all that, uh, at some point in time, that vindication will come for us, all right? We will be vindicated for all the shit that we have been saying about some of these guys that have somehow magically appeared into this reptile space, right? And we all know, like, this is the space, especially the manosphere, right? It's a space for, uh, you know, where a lot of guys come in, first of all, first of all they come in to get help, all right? you know, help with their issues, whether it's women, whether it's finances, whatever, you know, getting through divorce, whatever it is, right? So there are different avenues where guys can find that help. However, there's also another side to this space where it, it tends to suck people into rabbit holes. And uh, one of them is uh, the red pill, at least the idea of what the red pill is today. All right. No, it's no longer about, you know, finding the truth about, you know, hey, female nature. This is what women are all like. And this is all about society. And this is, you know, all these different things, right? The government. Oh, they already get you, right? All that, right? It has now turned from, you know, what it used to be to now, hey, how can I make money <laughs> off of a bunch of guys who really don't care about the truth? Because realistically, we realize that most of them, at least the vast majority of them, are actually sex starved. And they, they're trying to figure out how to get the box, okay? So how can we, being the grifters coming into this space, monetize on these young men and their desires for sex, right? And a lot of these guys, they come in and they, they're they sly with it, right? They come in acting like they got all the answers in the world, telling you, you know, hey, this these are the tenets that you have to live by. You know, the reason why the world is so confusing because, you know, you know, women, oh my God, like women, look at society. Every Everyone hates you as a man. And meanwhile, you know, we kind of, as men, occupy all spectrums of society, whether in the highest of uh, power and the lowest of scrubs and bums out there. Men, we occupy all spectrums of it. All right. No, we don't. We don't just we just skip that fact. Right. We just focus on all these other little things to get you guys hooked emotionally. OK. And the reason why they do that is because it's to keep these young men buying and unfortunately you know some of these guys they have taken it too far all right and one none so other than lord marquard lord marquard for those of you guys who don't know is a guy named uh saint in the center that's his uh, other channel okay um I call him Lord Marquard because this dude walks and acts and prances around like he is holier than thou. He even has a clip of himself basically saying that he has never ever ever been bullied no y'all y'all didn't hear me being made fun of and the reason is because when i was young <coughs> no one ever made fun of me no one ever fucked with me no one ever looked at me like yeah we want to bully that guy we want to fuck with that guy that never happened who believes this couch pattern freaking handsome squidward looking wannabe was never bullied. I just, I, I'm picking on you right now, realistically, and I'm not even trying. So this guy, the reason why I call him Lord Marquardt, because he actually genuinely believes that his shit does not stink, all right? And he comes onto YouTube uh, with the whole pimp nonsense, right? Talking about, you know, I used to be a pimp, because that's how they hook you, right? They come in, they want to talk to young men about how they can get more sex, right? Giving you lessons from a pimp! Right. So then these young men is like, oh, hey, look at this guy. There's this bald guy. He's got his grandmama's fucking uh, uh, couches on his suit. OK, so uh, uh, he looks like he's very intelligent and he also speaks well. Right. So why don't we just listen to him? I mean, he looks like he knows what he's talking about and they hook you in. And in this case, Lord Marquardt has something called the isms. OK, the ism is basically, uh, you know, a, a set of tenants. OK, a set of tenants and rules that he has created himself. And he he's, he also puts that in the black box. All right. And that's a book he has out. All right. Uh, don't, don't ask me what's in the black box. I don't want to know. 
<laughs> okay, but it, it, he he breaks down these isms, giving these young men, you know, tenants to life to follow. And these guys, they follow that shit heavy. All right. And, you know, all of this is fine and dandy. But here's the problem with someone like Lord Marquardt. Okay, someone like Lord Marquardt, his strategy also, uh, along with spewing a lot of this red pill pimp crap all right first of all i don't know how somebody can uh go from being a uh what do you call it, a, a pimp uh to a john hopkins university graduate and uh uc berkeley right uh how, how do you do that like that's weird how do you go from like all these uh you know degenerate activities from that to a pimp right i i don't i don't understand that so uh you if you want to kindly explain your background deeper uh mr pimp i would definitely want you to expound on that because i find that very interesting most pimps i know i mean they, they have not left the streets yet <laughs> you go out to the streets they still there all right they, they pimp. hey listen pimping ain't easy okay, but I, I digress all right so we got this guy who's uh trying to teach you guys how to be you know pimps and stuff like that but listen that's fine on his own because you find a bunch of these weirdos on youtube they're gonna try to teach you all this gamey type of crap you know to get your money essentially now here's the thing here's the thing that wouldn't be a problem for lord marquardt if and only if he didn't go after multiple people in this space all right because that's also a strategy for him. He clout chases, all right? And one of the things he does when he clout chases is he goes and bites off other content creators. And you guys know some of the other ones he's gone after, one of the notable ones like O'Shea Duke Jackson. You got, uh, what, what's his face? Uh, Kevin Samuels, right? We got O'Shea Duke Jackson, Kevin Samuels, right? He, he, he started going after a lot of these, and there were a lot more than just those two, but those are the more notable ones uh, that we no, uh, Kevin Samuels being as of recent, right, calling him a skittle guzzler, right? He, he basically came out of sexuality, and and sexuality is something that uh, Lord Marquard is a theme of his. All right, I don't know why he tends to focus on the uh, homosexual stuff and the homophobic stuff. Listen, uh, brother, <laughs> we got some questions about that too. But uh, anyways, uh, he called him a skittle guzzler. He was making fun of his business sense. He was really just going in on Kevin Samuels, right? And realistically. Our channel, that's where we come in because he did a, he did another video basically we going after uh, Kevin Samuels and we reacted to it, right? And it was like interesting because he was trying to differentiate himself from how he does business in his fashion sense versus Kevin Samuels and his business style and his fashion uh, sense too as well, which I found incredibly interesting, right? And on top of that, out of all that shit that he talked, about kevin samuels this dude then turns around and commits the ultimate cardinal sin in the manosphere because as you guys know in the manosphere we're supposed to be you know we're supposed to be hardened men right you know wolf wolf alpha dogs right hey listen hey you talk shit all right i'm gonna come at you you i'm gonna see you in person and when we see you in person shit's gonna happen right and lord marquardt He's supposed to be about that smoke, right? So what do you think would happen when someone like him finally runs into Kevin Samuels when, <laughs> after he's been talking all that shit on YouTube, right? Do you think, A, uh, chat, I want you guys to vote on this too, by the way. So get get in the chat and uh, uh, do this. I want to see A, Bs, or Cs, okay? A, do you think he actually decided to confront Kevin Samuels? B, did you think he decided to uh, hug it out with Kevin Samuels? Or C, do you think that uh, he actually knocked out Kevin Samuels when he finally met him, all right? I'll give you three seconds to answer. <laughs> put, the, put the ABCs in the chat. A, if he confronted him. B, if he, uh, uh, if he hugged him, all right? <laughs> and C... If he actually fought him, right? Those are three three options, okay? I'll let you guys vote in the chat. Uh, all right, time's up, okay? If you want to know, three, two, one, boom. He actually was hugging and taking selfies with the brother. Matter of fact, this particular photo sparked a lot of controversy within the Manosphere space because after all the shit this man has been, this, this couch pattern, listen, look, 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 at, look at his shirt, right? You, you can never get away from his grandmama's curtains. But like, after all this shit, this dude has been talking in this space about Kevin Samuels, right? You finally run up to him, you pull up to him, and you, you guys are hugging it out and taking selfies. What in the hell? You don't realize that you saying all that stuff, <laughs> your energy is different now. Right, so this caused a lot of converse, uh, controversy um, <coughs> within the manosphere, and what this bozo ended up doing was actually monetizing it and making content out of it. Right, he did a series of videos of, "Hey, 
You guys want to know how I ran into Kevin Samuels? <laughs> well, settle down. It's a crazy story. All right. You definitely want to hear this one. So as you guys know, I'm the king of Vegas. All right. I'm the king of Vegas. I'm Lord Marquardt. So when you cop in the Vegas, you got to check in with the big homie. So I had one of my buddies, he was uh chilling, right? And he he hit me up. He said, he said, he said, yo, Kevin Samuels, bro. Kevin Samuels, that dude, Kevin Samuels, he's he he's in town. He's over here at the Bellagio. Okay. Do you want me to do you want me to pull up on him and stop him? Right? What, what do you want me to do, Saint? Right? And then Saint was like, Hey, you know what? No, 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 no. I'm on my way. So Saint the Center makes his way all the way down to the Bellagio where he knew Kevin Samuels was going to be. And he then confronted Kevin Samuels, but it wasn't the confrontation we were looking for. No, no, no. What this man said was crazy. This man said that he then bought a penthouse suite right across the street from the Bellagio. All right. Just to flex on Kevin Samuels. In a five-minute conversation, this loser looks at that situation and says, yeah, this is a boss move. Kevin Samuels has got a penthouse. I told him I got a penthouse. Boss move. And I'm sitting there like, hey, I don't know about you, uh, but any idiots taking financial advice from this loser, I don't think it's financially wise for you to spend money on a freaking penthouse for a five-minute conversation just to flex for Kevin Samuels, and all you got out of it was a dumb selfie. You look stupid. And realistically, if you guys really want to know the truth, he didn't have people in Vegas to, to go ahead and check in and, you know, know when people are sneaking around. No, 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 no. He was snooping around in Kevin Samuels' Instagram because Kevin Samuels posted that he was going to be at the Bellagio in Vegas. My boy, <laughs> clout hungry as hell, right, knew he was going to be in town and pulled up on him. And realistically, I don't think he actually bought that penthouse. I think he was lying. I, I, I think he did because because listen, bro, I, I genuinely think this dude is broke. <laughs> All right. I genuinely think he's broke. So there's no way in hell this dummy is going ahead and spending money on a freaking penthouse for a five minute conversation to flex. Like that's not going to affect your pockets. You're not making that much money. I've seen your business records, bro. All right. The only company you have in existence right now is your assassin company. And that's tied to YouTube. So quit capping, bro. Anyways. <laughs> I just had to go into that tangent for you guys to understand the kind of man he is. So doing all of that, he was on our radar for the Kevin Samuel situation. And we decided to do our digging, right? And we dug into Kevin's, uh, not Kevin's, uh, St. The Center, right? Because he said he's a technologist. And mind you guys, everyone in this space, I'm talking about the Manosphere content creators, all the red pill guys, all right? Every one of them in this space, they vouched for this guy that he was a technologist. This whole time he's been, the years he's been in this space, right? And he was allowed to run around here talking about how great of a businessman he is, how much he has, you know, changed lives of people. And, you know, he's just such a great, you know, guy, right? Because he had this technology company that just just did so much wonders for him and everybody. And, you know, he, he, he he's a technologist, bro. Not only that, he's an educator, a prestigious university graduate. Right. And then I looked into it and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, bro. Uh, uh, Fletch app. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem with the company. <laughs> I can't seem to find it. Second of all, um, I'm trying to figure out where your millions came from, because it seemed like the total rounds of funding you got was about 250 uh, K. And you guys didn't really make money or even I mean, you guys lost a shit ton of money. And uh, where did the millions come from? Where did it go? <laughs> you know, if you actually made millions. Right. And. When you start digging into some of this stuff and then you start to find stuff about his employees and, you know, the other co companies that he set up and how they didn't make money, but then how he played games with his employees to, you know, steal money from his companies and, you know, scam his, his own investors, which one of them going under, by the way, which is very, very interesting. So we dug into that. And I had questions. And as you know, here at Duke the Don, when we have questions, we pull up to your live stream. OK, we pull up to your live stream and we just hey, listen, if you're having a smoke show. <laughs> all right. If you host a smoke show, 
all right, and we got smoke, and you invite us, we're going to come in. And the whole beef started between me and this clown was when I pulled up to a smoke show to ask questions, and I started, as I started asking questions in the chat, I got blocked. <laughs> so being a good, you know, astute YouTuber, what I decided to do was, hey, listen, if you're going to block me and not let me question you in front of your audience about your business dealings, well, I'm just going to release what my findings are to my audience so they can go ahead and make their judgments themselves. And uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> he didn't like that one bit. And he came after us. And for, for months, right, he was able to get away with no one else in this space really knowing how much of a fraud he is until recently. And we have our boy Destiny to thank. Okay. Now, Destiny, shout out to you. Uh, but essentially, what happened is you guys remember what I just said earlier how Lord Marquard likes to, you know, bite off, you know, other people and, you know, clout chase, meaning going in and attacking other people just to get views, right? He's done that with uh, O'Shea, Kevin Samuels. I just explained that. DJ Academics was one of the most recent one he did it with, right? All right. And then DJ Academics one, he kind of squirmed his way out of it because DJ Academics realistically kind of looked like a clown when he was dissing them back. I Listen, hey, hey, yo, big act, big act. Listen, bro. <laughs> I fuck with you, G. Listen, but to come back to Lord Marquard, you could have, it, it could have been harder, bro. Pause. <laughs> Pause. You see what I'm saying? So, I, 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 big dog, big dog, big act. I'm just saying, bro. All right. You could have you could have came harder. Pause. But, you know, it is what it is. All right. So, Destiny was the one to actually do it, right? He decided, uh, Lord Marquardt decided to go after Destiny by, you know, reacting to some of the videos, kind of similar to what he did with uh, DJ Academics. And he got Destiny's attention, right? And we saw the clip we played last live stream, and it, it, he pulled up on him, right? And that's what happens when you host a smoke show, right? So Destiny pulls up, you know, Lord Marquardt thinking he's going to just steamroll people the way he was going to steamroll people, and he bit off more than he can chew. All right, and Destiny kind of mopped the floor with them. Matter of fact, it was just so embarrassing. It was it was embarrassing for him because what it showed to not only him but to his audience and the rest of the YouTube Manosphere community that this guy is actually a weak pussy <laughs> and he's a fraud, and he exposed himself live in front of thousands of people. Now, here's where things get crazy. Destiny just dropped a video this morning, and he was exposing Lord Marquand how he uh, isn't really worth $100 million. He even showed the site that we showed on our stream, that little scam site that was up there, right? You click off, and then you might get a virus. Who knows, right? He showed that. That was a scam, all that stuff, right? And he also uh, showed a video of, we played that before, where, uh, where it was a, the episode was Laura Marquardt has a God complex. Y'all go check that episode out, right? And we're playing the video that Destiny played where dude was in Kenya or whatever. I think it was Kenya, right? And he was walking around thinking he was God amongst the Africans. It was like, nigga, who the fuck? Is <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, bro. What's wrong with you? And he had a weird ass, like a documentary, like sound to it where it's like, yes, Marquette Devon Burton is so nice. He's so great and so divine. Oh my God, Marquette Devon Burton. Oh my God, I just want to, I just, he, he, he look at all these African kids, okay? He, he could have left early, okay? But listen, he could, he, he, decided to stay with these Africans and take pictures because he is Marquette Devon Button, the one, the only, the one you can't question, <laughs> Saint the Sinner, okay? It, it was ridiculous. So he played that video and kind of exposed them and basically came to the conclusion that we all should have came to a long time ago, that this clown, okay, this Fletch app clown, all right, is a scammer, okay? So today... As you hit the like button on your way in, go ahead and relax because we are going to play this reaction video beautifully. But not only that, we are also going to go deep into the investigation of Lord Marquardt. We are going to cover certain things that Destiny neglected to cover. And we're going to make this such a wholesome package. Guys, please hit the like button and enjoy the show. Who is the saint and the sinner? I thought about putting together a whole dossier on this, but I'm too lazy and I don't care that much about this guy. Just enough. Don't worry, we did. Some of the funny shit that I've come across.
<clears throat> Here is a video about him on his channel. Are you ready? We leave Jomo Kenyatta Airport. Marquette's mobile rings. The chief of police is phoning to welcome Mr. Burton to Nairobi, sharing that a an armed guard will be waiting in the morning to escort Marquette wherever he wishes to go. It's a mystery as to how such a young man has so many extraordinary connections around the planet. Marquette Devon is the real life James Bond. does your head have to be up your own ass dude holy shit wow of all the leaders i've documented i've never witnessed an armed guard so taken with the person they are charged with protecting Marquette <laughs> he doesn't look like he gives a fuck <laughs> is a man you share your secrets with and laugh with even if you have an ak-47 strapped over your shoulder it's just that marquette devon burton is enchanting and bold <laughs> and kind. <laughs> oh, but enchanting and kind, bitch. We know you lying. Stop the cap, you lying ass bitch. You are the worst human being I have ever had the displeasure of beefing with online. What in the hey? Do not tell your secrets to this loser, bro. It's a one-way guaranteed to get your shit exposed, all right? He's the kind of guy that uses your deepest shit and then flips on you. This guy is an absolute, not only an idiot, but a freaking monster, bro. A Kenyan public school teacher reached out asking if he would be willing to surprise her students on their field trip to Nairobi. Despite other plans, with a smile, he agreed. The Kenyans literally rolled out the red carpet for Mr. Burton. What the fuck? I mean, guys. <laughs> come on. Yo, guys. Come on. Who does this? <laughs> Clearly, they didn't roll this shit out for you, you liar. <laughs> like, what is this? This looks like it's part of their hotel, bro. All right? Look, look at this white guy. He's just walking past like, hey, what's going on over here? <laughs> like, bro, what is this? His arrival. He <laughs> he's just looking at him like, what is going on, bro? You know what it is? He probably has a camera and they're staring at the camera. And these guys are like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this guy just set up a camera. Now he's like, is he filming himself walking into our hotel? All right, this is weird. What is that? Oh, it's an American thing. Yeah. He is an enigmatic figure, a businessman, and a boxer, an author. <laughs> A stoic and a poet and above all a philosopher <laughs> a leader in reforming global human culture he's written a three-sentence bible be yourself be good to yourself be good to good people this is the guy that says i'm exploiting black people by the way and here he is living that that's real fucking original. Be good to yourself. Be good to other people. The fuck does that mean, bro? It's so, that is the most generic bullshit I have ever heard. Can I hear that again? He wrote a three-sentence Bible. He wrote a three-sentence Bible, and that's all he was able to put in there? Be good to good people. This is the guy that says, I'm hold exploiting up, black up, people, hold, by the way. Hold the French toast door. A leader in reforming global human culture. He's written a three-sentence Bible. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. The fuck does that mean? Like, that, that is so basic, it's not even funny, bro. Like, <laughs> you wrote a three-sentence Bible? You taking credit for that shit? Oh, my God. The fact that this was even in this video is fucking ridiculous. This is the guy that says, I'm exploiting black people, by the way. I know, bro. He's crazy. And here he is living that. <laughs> look at this. I mean, just, just look at this. Like, what the? Look at this. 
<laughs> just, just, just like, oh, so what are Kenyans to you, bro? Like, what is, what is this, bro? <laughs> Marquette's assistant allocated 30 minutes in his schedule for this meet and greet. But Marquette stayed to take a photo with every kid who wanted one and to listen to each boy rap and give every child the attentiveness that he teaches parents to give their children. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That, that's real saintly of you, you stupid bitch. Yeah, just stay. Oh, 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 yeah. Listen, my assistant, she allowed it 30 minutes for photos and all that shit, right? It's not like all of this is staged or anything like that. No, but you know what? I decided to stay longer and hear out these African kids because I am such a great person. You're buying it? No. Oh, no. He is Mr. Rogers of the modern era. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers of the modern era. Bro, this is peak level cringe. <laughs> There are many who say there is much that is wrong in the world today, but there is only one who is doing something to make change around the world, to ensure that boys grow into strong men and leaders, and that girls grow into ladies, great mothers, excellent wives, and productive citizens. Marquette Devon Burton. Yes, yes. <laughs> How much of a narcissist do you have to be to even even make that statement in a documentary you made about yourself? Did you write this? Did you write the script, bro? Like, what is this, bro? How can you in the right mind say you are the only person in the world helping people <laughs> become better men? If anything, I think you're doing worse. I, I think, matter of fact, you know what? Nah, that'd be a false thing to say because I'd be like, yo, you are the only one right now making it hell for a lot of young dudes out there. That's what I would say. You're just lining your pockets up with that cash, huh? Who is stupid enough to fall for this? Like, real talk, can you just you, you smell the bullshit? I can listen, I can smell the bullshit coming through my screen, dog. Like, this is this is peak level cringe. Like, what is this? <laughs> what the fuck? This is <laughs> This is this is nonsense of the highest order, okay? So originally, I don't I don't there's a way to look this up, but like um apparently they made him change it. He originally had this YouTube video titled as BBC coverage or BBC Emerging World Leaders Profile, and then they wow. made him change the title because obviously it's not a BBC thing. <laughs> but um this is Lay Ruse, no? It's all fake. He's like, he's an actual scam artist. <laughs> like uh, this whole profile is fake. He's not, he's not an emerging leader. He's not anything. No. Um, this is the app that he says that he like invented for some company they work for Fletch. It hasn't even been downloaded a thousand times. I bet most of these downloads are probably just from people working on the project, seeing if it works on other devices. Like his, this guy's Holy whole shit. life is a scam. He, um, he did a rug pull for $2,000. Limited supplies. Sat yo, yo, chat. Remember the episode I did calling this out before he did that shit. Remember this. I did a whole chat, chat. Come on now, chat. I did a whole episode calling this out. I'm like, yo, this guy has a crypto token called Assassin Coin. Meanwhile, he's going around calling other people frauds for promoting that shit. How are you going to sit there and call other people a scam for promoting crypto and you got yourself a whole crypto token with zero value, right? And there were people in the comment section of that, of this right over here saying, what, what is it? What is this token going to do? Right? Oh, we'll figure it out. Just buy in. And the rug pulled for $2,000. You hustled your fans for $2,000. Bro, that's pennies. <laughs> that's not... I don't want to say it's nothing, nothing. Two thousand dollars a lot of money, all right. But like, damn, you couldn't, you couldn't afford two bands. 
Uh, I mean, that'll be the cost to fly your ass out here to Wisconsin first class because, you know, you got to get the, you know, you know, all the amenities, your highness. OK, I, I'll fly you out first class for that ass whooping, bro. So just let me know. That's about the cost of it. You mean you had the rug pull your cans for two thousand dollars, bro? Oh, boy. Assassin coin is now available for purchase. He announced his coin on YouTube. And Soul Scan, if you look at the TVL, the total value lock, it looks like the pool was at $2,000 for a couple of days before collapsing to zero. If you look at the trade section, there's a bunch of transactions for removing liquidity. The transactions are going to his address, which have his own NFTs on them. Yep. $2,000. Yep. Um, I noticed in one of his Samuel, uh, Kevin Samuels videos, he's calling out Kevin Samuels because he's saying like, oh, well, bro, when I search for your name, I don't see any companies you own. Aren't you an entrepreneur? So I looked up this guy's companies, okay? I looked up this dude's companies. I was curious, well, what do you own? What companies you done? This guy moved his entire business to fucking Erie in order to try and get, in order to try and secure, hold on. Fifty thousand dollars of investment. Do you know what? Uh, there was a there was a company called Schoolhouse Labs that was actually located in that area, and that was a company that actually donated the fifty or not donated but invested the stuff uh, fifty thousand dollars. I'll show you guys here in just a second. Hold up, these guys right over here. So if you look at that. This is their seed round funding. They gave the they gave the Fletch. All right. So this is the CEO. And they dumped it said it would dumped about 50k into his company. No, it's not this guy. Oh. I'm trying to see the amount they put out, but it was either it was either Schoolhouse Lab or Art Grants. I think it might actually be Art Grants that they uh, they pulled up on. I think it actually might be Art Grant. Hold up. Yeah, I think it might be these guys. No, no, never mind. No, it's St. Louis. Never mind. Um, but it's one of these companies here. I think it was these guys. I really think it was, I think it was this was the. Uh, this is the this is it right here. I think this is it right here. Let's see. Yeah, I think this was it right here. But oh, we about to go into it. We about to go into it. This is a guy that's worth oh, and then also. Fuck, somebody emailed me this, but I don't have it. I don't have it on hand. He created a fake website to say that his net worth was $100 million. <laughs> $100 million. He made a website to say that. Does anybody have a link to that? Destiny, post his house? No, chill. What the fuck? Such cat, bro. This guy's ridiculous. But the manosphere is filled with guys like this. It's filled with guys like this. He and also gets mad because he call them out. Tips on his YouTube channel. Like to get her down to that G string, and then I start getting undressed. You dig? And then I'll get down, butt ass. <laughs> <laughs> I get butt ass, and I'm in there, you know, getting that grind, <laughs> and that grind oh on, you know, just getting her warmed oh up. What then the you know, when you kiss her, you real low key. You go ahead and reach for the strap. You pull the strap oh out. My God. And you're kissing it. You, can't, you can't slow the flow. Don't slow the flow. Keep going. Throw it on. As soon as you throw it on, then you get Dead in there. Ass. Ah, like to get her down to that G string. Oh my God. Hold on. Stop. 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 Hold the fucking French stone store. We can't just go past that now. Time out. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I'm about saying. Uh, oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Saint, listen, I, I know you was, uh, I, <laughs> uh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That was, uh, that was really interesting. Let me, 
<laughs> let me see the CEO of Fletch app again. Uh, let me get a closer look at the CEO of Fletch app real quick. I start getting undressed, you dig? And then oh, yeah. I'll get down, butt ass. <laughs> <laughs> I get butt ass and I'm in there, you know, getting that grind on. <laughs> and that grind on, you know, just getting her warmed up. Then, you know, when you're kissing her and you're real low key, you go ahead and reach for the strap. You pull the strap out and you're kissing her. You can't, you can't oh. slow the flow. Don't slow the flow. Keep oh, going. No. Throw it oh, on. No. As soon as you throw it on, then you get I'm in dead. there. Ah, that's to get it down to oh, that Lord. G string. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, Loma. <laughs> hey, is that is that how you get down? <laughs> is that what it is? A butt ass. <laughs> hey, I'm memeing that. I'm memeing that, bro. <laughs> I'm memeing that. That's a meme. Butt ass. <laughs> Oh my God, dog! That is hilarious, but ass. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, Lord Marquardt, I think you bit off a little bit more you can chew, dog. Real talk, but ass. <laughs> Somebody brought this up when he was trying to sell that chain yesterday for his like sick friend in the hospital. But yeah, anyway, this guy is. Um, I just thought it was funny after our interview, like reading about some shit about this guy. He actually, this guy is an actual fucking scam artist. Like he lies about his past. He tries to sell like weird shit to his fans or whatever. Um, click allow if you're not a robot to show notifications. Uh, I'm good on that one, chief. What is this dog shit website? Hold up, 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 hold up. It's this dog shit website. You see this chick right here? That's Bridget. That's the one who reads the super chat behind the scenes. She, I told you guys, one of the main things that I said with this whole Fletch App scheme, the woman involved in this Fletch App scheme that he mentioned, that he put as a, 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 a what do you call it, a CEO or shell, whatever it is, she either has to be with him one way or the other. Either she's fucking him or she's getting paid by him, right? And I told you, that woman isn't just going to walk away from a scheme like Fletch App, a $250,000 scheme that uh, Lord Marquardt concocted. That woman is still going to be with Lord Marquardt one way or the other. That's her. She's the one. This lady right here sitting next to this guy right here was also involved in that scheme. And now the both of them are on YouTube. She's just not showing her face. She just sits back there and uh, reads the super chat. But that's Bridget Dorsal. That's who she is right there. She's involved in the whole Fletch App scheme, the whole Fletch App scam. Matter of fact, when he was allegedly counting $150,000 of what was left of the money that he took off with, right, she was there. Bruh, this dude is a scammer. Like, Destiny has no idea how deep this rabbit hole goes, bro. This dude is, there's a reason why he took down most of my videos involving this lady. Marquis Burton, net worth $100 million. <laughs> Like one hundred million dollars. It's fuck. It's fuck. Did he make this whole website? Is this website even real, bro? You see how you see how every time he clicks off, it's like trying to get him to download like spam. Like that. That's all malware in there, bro. Like if he clicks confirm or any of that bullshit you have no idea what you're letting in your computer bro yo chat remember when we were exposing this website way back and i was clicking around y'all saw it yeah y'all wouldn't tell like yo don't get a virus right that's the that, that's the same website the same website saying he was worth a hundred million dollars how how where did the hundreds of millions come from buddy that doesn't make any sense i can't i can't even look at the fucking dog shit yeah get off the site bro what is mine? Not a hundred million dollars. 
Is his Patreon legit? No, I bet the Patreon is fake. I bet he fakes a lot of the Patreon activity. Don't know how, but I bet he does it. <laughs> or he's actually just scammed that many people on his Patreon, which is possible too, but... No, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Yeah, Jesus. Anyway, also, fuck this guy. He clip-chimped my shit hard, and he tried to get me banned before we even spoke. You're stupid. Two hours in, right? And still oh! Look at this clip champ. Oh! He does that to everybody. This guy's a pussy, dude. He does that to everybody. All, like, the videos that were really hard-hitting, that expose a lot about him. And this video actually might get taken down because after this, I'm going to go into the companies again. We're going to expose that shit. We're going we're gonna to cover the things that Destiny missed, okay? But, like, real talk, all those videos, he took them down. And he flagged them while he was on his channel talking about, like, I was running or something like that. That's his... Bro, that's what this guy does. He, he he tries to undercut you and then turns around and pretends that you're the bitch, even though he's the one that's crying foul, eh, crying to daddy YouTube. But I'm not surprised he tried to get Destiny banned. It's out in the open, bro. Lord Marquardt, your taxes, your tactics are out in the open. So when I'm telling my audience, telling them like, yo, the video that got taken down, it wasn't because of me. He took it down, bro. He's getting people to flag my shit. I don't know why. This is what I'm talking about. This guy, he did, you're, you, you, you didn't even have the foresight to think, hey, you know, it might look bad if I try to play the same game with the bigger content creator. Like, they're not going to call this shit out and expose you even, like, even worse. Like, did you not think about that? You don't think Destiny knows when somebody's trying to get their shit taken down? He's a veteran in this game, bro. He knows. But this is the game he plays, which is why I'm like, y'all people that are still following this loser, like, why? Like, like, what do you see? Unless you're in a cult, like, what do you see? Hold on. Watch this. Saint and Sinner says you're stupid. Two hours in, right? And there's still another hour, 40 minutes. And here's the funny thing. No one's made a penny from the whole thing except the, the bisexual white dude who's been playing video games the whole time. How ironic. Everyone else been pouring out their passion, their arguments, their solution, their thinking. And the, the gay white dude playing the video games is making the bag. Look, he might not know how to live his life in terms of morals, but he knows how to get to the bag. Shout out to him. Because he didn't use Who is this degenerate f***ing loser? I'm going to start calling black people out. These motherfuckers, we're going DEFCON CON 5 on black people. Saint and Sinner says you're stupid. <laughs> what was wow. that fucking rapid fire edit? What was that rapid fire wow. edit? That is dirty, bro. Saint, that is dirty, bro. Yo. Yo. That's a... You're trying to make him look like a racist? That's a... Yo. Bro, that is a dirty, dirty move, bro. That's a dirty play. Wow. Hold up. I got to... Yo, you cut up clips to make him look like a racist. Yo, hey, Destiny, dog, I'm telling you, if you want to sue, if you want to sue, because he keep, hey, I still have people telling me that I'm a janitor, okay? That's hurtful to my brand, because I'm not a janitor. So, uh, could we, <laughs> could we, could we do a class action, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, because, bro, if anything, you have a case, bro. Bro. Hold up, I gotta play that back. That, I did not just see that, bro. That's crazy that you would play that game. Who is this degenerate f***ing loser? I'm gonna start calling black people out. These motherfuckers, we're going Death Con 5 on black people. Saint and Sinner says you're so <laughs> what? And you know what's funny? Look, look, 426 people like that. Or 36 people. We got 436 idiots liking what's an obvious sham. Wow. And you know what's funny? This is guy likes to play the race card all the fucking time. He's the same one that talks shit about black people all day. He makes fun of black people's features, right? He he talks about he when he was clowning me, he's talking about oh you got a big nose, oh you're ugly, oh yeah, look at your teeth, ah, look at your teeth, right? All the, all these really weird, you know, freaking. <laughs> I don't know, like why you would focus on a guy's looks, which is very interesting. Like you are hyper fixated on people's looks i find that very interesting i mean he did the same thing with destiny to be honest with you but it's just like wow bro you make fun of black people you clown them especially black women we know you love white women i get it it is what it is right but then when it comes to when you're getting attacked the first people you hide behind is the same people you clown
I find that very interesting. I find that I find it sad, bro. It's very, very sad that you do that. Like, so now that you're getting roasted, you're trying to play the race card. And this is a fucking trigger that gets a lot of black people up in arms, right? Because they would see this and they would be like, oh, look at this white boy. Oh, yeah, no, 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 fuck this guy. That That's how, because, like, it's just, because look how he's phrasing this shit, bro. He says, Google allows racist YouTuber destiny to tr threaten black people in front of one million. What is, what is, what? How much of a bitch do you have to be, dude, to even write that? He says, one million, what's under this, uh, one million subscribers. You're pussy, dude. You're fucking pussy. <laughs> like, no joke. Hey, Lord Marquardt. Hey, Lord Marquardt. You're a pussy, dog. Wait a minute. You you just... Wait, time out. You just put a video up saying Google allows racist YouTuber Destiny to threaten black people in front of one million subscribers. <laughs> Yo, I can't believe what I'm reading, dude. You're a pussy. Wow. So you already run it. The fight haven't even started yet. You already running. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Hey, congrats on you know, exposing yourself to the highest level. And it seems like this was the end of the video. I just want to play this one more time to see how much of a racist destiny is. Um, because I I I mean, based on this video and 436 people liking that, Destiny is a complete racist, bro. Apparently. Holy fucking shit. There's still another. Look at this clip, champ. Hold on. Watch this. Saint and sinner says you're stupid. Two hours in, right? And there's still another hour, 40 minutes. And here's the funny thing. No one's made a penny from the whole thing except the, the bisexual white dude who's been playing video games the whole time. How ironic. Everyone else has been pouring out their passion, their arguments, their solution, their thinking, and the, the gay white dude playing the video games is making the bag. Look, he might not know how to live his life in terms of morals, but he knows how to get to the bag. Shout out to him. Because he didn't use Who is this degenerate fucking loser? I'm going to start calling black people out. These motherfuckers, we're going DEF CON 5 on black people. Saint and <laughs> Yeah, that's fucked, dude. That that that's the like that's horrible. <laughs> you're you're a pussy for that, bro. Real talk, like, and then you're gonna that's you're gonna put that as a title. Hey, I need your pimp card, bro. <laughs> you gotta turn in your pimp card. That's not pimping. Hey, this ain't pimping, bro. <laughs> hey, pimps don't snitch. All right, I'm gonna have to have you turn in that pimp card if it were yeah, if it actually existed. But you gonna have to turn that shit in, bro, because like this is not pimping. <laughs> this is definitely not pimping, bro. Wow, really. Really, and you know what's crazy? You're, 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 you're calling them gay. You're, you're you're basically coming at his sexuality, right? You're you're being you're, you're I mean, you want to call it homophobic, but according to you, homophobic doesn't exist, right? But you're always constantly focused on this guy's sexuality, bro. Like, why are you constantly focused on this guy's sexuality, bro? I mean, do you find him attractive? I mean, he is bisexual, bro. <laughs> so, I mean. Saying, I mean, I like listen, I don't know why you're focused on his sexuality. Like, what is it, bro? So what if he's bisexual? Who gives a fuck? Why, why, why does is that something you think black folks are gonna be clowning? Half the black, I would say half the black community, but a sizable population is in the LGBTQ. So what what are you what are you, what what point are you trying to make? Unless you're trying to come out of the closet. Is that what it is? You, you want you some old destiny meat right there? Is that, is that what it is? Because I can't for the life of me figure out why you're still focused on this dude's sexuality, which is very interesting. But let's go ahead and take that off the screen because, guys, I have a special treat for you, okay? Listen, Destiny did do his best to expose this guy, but I don't think he went far enough, all right? Because obviously, Destiny, he was following the money, all right? And he was on the ball. He was right. This company, there was something fishy to it. It doesn't, it doesn't smell right. All right, and he, obviously he didn't have the time to do a whole expose uh, for you guys. But you know what? Listen, we've done it oh, tons of times in multiple videos. But I'm gonna condense it to a short Cliff Notes version so you guys can go ahead and digest it. Okay, and feel free to call the cops on this guy if you absolutely think he actually took it too far. All right, I am, I am a hundred percent okay with that because listen. What I am about to release today, okay, I'm going to let you all know that this man, okay, this this guy, all right, this this Fletch app loser, all right, a.k.a. Lord Marquand, is probably the worst person on the planet, especially when it comes to YouTube, all right? This guy is probably the biggest danger to a lot of young men out there than, than, than even, I wouldn't even say the likes of Fresh and Fit.
All right. So there's a reason why he's probably hasn't been on that show for a long time. Uh, <laughs> so let's get into it. So who is Marquette Devon Burton and Fletch app? Right. So when Destiny's saying that this guy is running a scam company, like what does he mean by that? Right. Well, let's go ahead and pull up some things because Fletch app is a tech, supposed to be a technology attendance tracking company as well now i know you some of you guys uh i don't uh, some of you guys are tech savvy um but you guys are familiar with blackboard i mean anyone who's ever been to college knows what blackboard is or at least i've heard of it right so fletch app was supposed to be an education platform to compete with blackboard all right and there are numerous videos that he's done when he was trying to do pitches for it where he explains it we'll, we'll cover some of those today right and also it was also supposed to be an attendance tracking app too as well with a feature called an eye beacon okay and an eye beacon you stick it on a wall it's tagged to the phone so when the kids walk into class boop they know you're here right so that, that's pretty much the gist of it right he's saying that fletch app invented that technology um and there are videos of him on fox news ozarks basically claiming that he invented that technology which isn't true it's actually created by a company called like something technologies or something like that and they they manu mass manufactures a lot of these beacons so first things first his fletch app um was basically a combination of a white label company uh for those of you guys know what a white label company is it's basically a company that pre-builds the application it's almost like a shell and then they license the features out where you can go in and then basically you know put your own logo slap your own uh you know what do you what do you call it your own you know twist and spin on it to customize it to your particular business and then you run with it okay but he claims that he coded it right from the command line <laughs> Um, but, but, um, he says that, which anyone who's ever worked with any, even just a basic level of programming, right. You would look at that and say, okay, something's off about this because the, 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 the structure is just too, it's just too, it's just too familiar. All right. And how can a company of three people employee wise create something so robust that doesn't make any sense. Um, so we quickly found out that it was a, uh, white labeling company. And then he uh, basically also licensed out the iBeacon. If you guys don't believe me, this is what that looks like right here. Let me show you guys this right here. So you guys are looking at what's called an iBeacon. Now, you can actually get this on Alibaba for 15 bucks, but his company was charging this as an addition to his app for $50, okay? Thinking that no people weren't going to fall for this. All right, so let's go into his business profile. So Fletch app basically had a total investment of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and all of that came from a company, uh, from three different companies. It was Art Grants, Schoolhouse Labs, and Impact Engine. Okay, now what's freaking crazy is that this particular company went under. Okay, Schoolhouse Labs went under um, as a investment firm, so they, you know, they're they're gone. And the crazy thing about Schoolhouse Labs is that their last investment, which was on September 28, 2015, was actually, ding, 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 you get it, to Fletch App. So Fletch App was the last company they ever did a funding for before they went under. And and I believe this was the uh, this was the company that uh, shelled out 50K um, for them to go out for where Destiny was talking about him moving his office to the Midwest. That was this company because the owner here, um, Jordan, the owner, because we did a we did an in depth video on it on Jordan and how he was talking about his schoolhouse labs, the whole idea of the company, and when you read his bio and what he was trying to do with schoolhouse labs, um, the way he described it, he actually had a facility in the Midwest where he actually had a bunch of people uh, entrepreneurs come in under one roof to basically start working and building their projects, and that's how they secured funding. This was the uh, uh, investment firm in which Fletch App was one i know for a fact moved over to that area now i don't know if art grants was one of them but art grants is basically another one that gave um fletch app some money and as we can see they also get fletch app about fifty thousand dollars is what they gave them uh fifty thousand dollars in uh uh funding is what they gave them and fletch uh, uh, uh art grants is actually a pretty pretty large uh firm so they they i mean they have a pretty sizable funding amount you know pretty sizable amount of employees pretty robust investments um you know sizable exit strategies right now we know that fletch app was one of the companies that was invested in our grants right 
And Lord Marquard claims that he sold the company. And you would, if you sell the company, that means that your investors has to exit somehow, right? So that theoretically would mean that Fletch App should be among the seven companies that exited uh, or part of our grants exit pretty much, right? And they would have made a profit out of it, right? So let's find out. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's right. I don't see Fletch App anywhere. So... It, the, the company was actually dissolved. It, it never sold. So if you actually hear him saying he sold the company, it's bullshit. Actually, you're going to hear him in a clip I'm going to play next. Uh, him basically claiming that he sold it, right? So there it is. So we got Art Grant's Schoolhouse Labs with Jordan, all right, which was a sad case because this was a young guy who basically was going out and uh, trying to do their thing. But unfortunately, they're closed because, you know, they invested in the wrong companies. And you guys know investment banking and investment firms, you know, and, and private equity, all that shit, bro. It's it's a high risk, okay? Because you're investing in, you know, companies that you don't know where it's gonna where it's gonna go. You don't know what where people you don't know where the company's gonna go. You don't know if you got a unicorn on your hands or you got a dud. All right. And unfortunately, Lord Marco was charismatic enough to convince someone like Jordan to give his last, you know, money to idiots like this, which you know, Fletch App didn't become a thing. So as you know, what did the Lord Marquardt do with that money, right? He got a total of $250,000. Well, this man went traveling. He did what all, uh, or I wouldn't say all, but he did what, you know, most people would do was go, you know, market himself, right? So there are photos of him when you see him out there on in China or there are places where he's like going to universities and he's speaking, right? Those pictures are from this event right here. He's going there to promote Fletch app to basically solicit investors. He's not being invited there to speak as like a business magnate or like a emerging leader. No, that's all cap. All right. He's just going there to beg for money. Okay. Because hey, Fletch app got to make money. You only got $250,000 and you can't make money. All right. And realistically, if you listen to this guy's pitch, which we're going to play right now, if you listen to this guy's pitch, right, you can tell, bro, that this guy. Listen, you can tell that this company was not destined to make money at all, which is sad that he was able to pull off $250,000 because there's no way Fletch App was going to be able to do the kind of numbers he was promising. And if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and play him actually giving a a, uh, a, a pitch. You can hate all you wanna, but you sold your pajama now. I ain't a prima donna, but I built 20 million college students, half will never graduate. That means that students and families are left with debt, but no degree. And colleges lose $16 billion in tuition alone every year to dropouts. The reason so many of our students drop out is because you spend a lifetime in a 25-person classroom, whether you have friends, your teacher knows your name. Next thing you know, you're in a 300-person lecture hall. You often end up isolated, struggling with very little support. This is why we created Fletch. Fletch is a student retention app that empowers undergraduates to easily join study groups or crowdsource help from peers taking the same class with any professor. Uniquely, we're able to take existing. This is all white label, by the way. He didn't he didn't code this app. This is all white label on campus resources that are relevant and target them directly to the students that need them. Financial aid, counseling, advising, you name it. Fletch is currently growing. We had 64% daily active users, so students love us. We currently license our technology to the largest community college, excuse me, the largest university in America. We also uh, have a paid client in the number one ranked community college. That's not true. When he says we license the technology to universities, he's not talking about Fletch app. He's talking about the actual company that is white labeling they're licensing out their companies but the thing is he's legally able legally able to get away with that wordplay because technically fletch app isn't his own application it be it's a it belongs to the company that he's i think it was ed unity is a company uh it belongs to them that that's their application but they're the ones who are licensing it out to these millions of people that are able to use this application it's not fletch app itself Fletch App itself doesn't have those numbers, and it, we can prove it. Like, it does not have those numbers at all. He's piggybacking off of the numbers of the white label company themselves. Keep that in mind. Uh, Chartered Accountants of India just asked to bring 900,000. 
Mateo, Mateo's right, right. We, yeah, we already proved it, right? You only had 900 downloads and you licensed it out to millions of people. Note the wordplay. This guy's really good at wordplay. It's, it's not even funny. Students on our platform. Uh, so we're doing really well. And what we're looking to do over the next year is to bring on our first quarter of a million students, close 10 paid deals. And so I invite you all to join our cause of ensuring that every student in America is supported in earning the university degree that will empower them to pursue their dreams in this land of opportunity. Wow, she's about to get grilled right now. Here comes the questions. Where did you go to school? I went to Berkeley and Johns Hopkins. Berkeley and Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins for a graduate degree? Yes. In what? Education. Very nice. My bread and butter right here. So, so you're a teacher. Yeah. yeah, I was a teacher. I came out, uh, did Teach for America in Baltimore, actually. And so I spent my entire career in education and educational technology. And then one day, what happened? You're, tell me the story. Yeah, so, and, and I'll give you the fast forward uh, yeah. part, but did Teach for America, taught high school, sent students into college. You, you went to Teach for America as a program that you went into right after right after you graduated That's your right. master's degree. Got yes. it. Uh, no, I actually did it while I was earning my master's okay. degree. So I was Fine. teaching full-time sure. and going to school full-time. Uh, but I sent my high school students in the university. And you know, you see your students around the community mm -hmm. and they look you in your eye and they don't want to tell you that they dropped out. So they say they're taking a break or whatever the case was. And I know so many of my students were dropping out of college. Uh, so that was something I wanted to work on next. I went to non uh, nonprofit route, uh, worked for Hopkins Medical, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with matriculation and was seeing that this was still an issue. And the question was, how can you support students, make it scalable and do it inexpensively? And it has to be in a for-profit situation because nonprofits are gonna have to keep raising money. And that takes you away from your core mission of retaining students. So, so, so you, you went to a small school, so you had I small did. classes. Yeah. I went to a state school yeah. like you did, exactly. and you had big classes. You know, yeah. So I know exactly where you're coming from. Wait, and wait, are in our city. wait, didn't he clown destiny for going to a state school? Omaha. So here's he trying to get investor cash, pitching his company, and the person he's trying to get money from went to a state school, just like <laughs> Lord Marquardt. I find that very interesting, bro. Yet you come on YouTube trying to beat your fucking degrees over the heads of people who may or not have been as prestigious as you. Dude, you're such a hack. Situation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so. I agree. So, so tell us a little bit about your team too. Where sure. did you meet your your core team? Good question. So, uh, my chief technology officer, uh, DeAndre Lewis, who's a genius, by the way, uh, Duke University computer science guy, built integrace, uh, enterprise grade uh, solutions for like Verizon. Uh, I met him through a professor I had when I was sixteen. So, I, I went to community college at sixteen, and a professor I had there introduced me to DeAndre. You went to a community college at sixteen? Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's not very saintly of you. Wait a minute now. That that's worse than a state school. <laughs> Wait a minute. Community college at 16. Listen, as impressive that is, I got a big question for you. Okay. From the age of 16 all the way up until you're adult and you enter John Hopkins or UC Berkeley, whichever came first. When within that time frame were you a pimp? I'll wait. No, 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 seriously, I'll wait. Take your time. You you went to community college at 16. Yet you on YouTube saying you were a pimp. So where did, were you pimping while you were in community college? Is that the hustle? Like I'm trying to figure out where this pimping falls into play. Because the more we dig into your background before YouTube, before you started hustling these red pill dudes, right? <laughs> it turns out that it doesn't seem like there's enough room for you to be a pimp. How do you go to community? That is the nerdiest thing in the world I've ever heard. You go to community college at 16. How, how, how does a pimp end up in a community college at 16? How, or even like what? Where, where would, did you drop out of community college? Became a pimp for like a year and then went to college at UC Berkeley or John Hopkins? How? There's some questions, bro. Because I, I, there's some mad holes in your backstory. Okay, either you lying about being a pimp or or, or something's wrong here. <laughs> I don't know what it is, people. Can y'all smell the bullshit in the chat? Let me know. Andre, and we've been working on this ever since. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Oh, I love that. And so when did you say you started this? What year? Uh, about two and a half years ago. About two and a half years so, ago. So I have a question. You, yes. you mentioned during your pitch that you, the largest state this, university. Is, the largest university in America. What is that? I, I didn't say their name because uh, we're actually white labeling for them. Okay. Boom! Boom! I told you it was a white label company, bro. You saw that slick. You saw how slick he was with the words, right? We license our technology to 
thousands of university students in the Midwest or to the biggest university in the Midwest. And then all of a sudden, oh, hey, okay, well, what's the university that you license the technology to? Oh, we can't say that because we're white labeling. But wait, that's not true. Because no, no, it's not you. Fletch, Fletch app is Fletch app is the white is the basically the white label product. All right, there's a company called I think it was Ed Unity or is a different company that actually designed the product that they licensed out to him. Okay, to use, he just slapped this Fletch app logo on logo on it, and he's piggybacking off of their success. That company that created the white label app and it's licensing it out, they're the ones who have the connections with the universities. So you see how he's being slick with the words. He's playing a con game with investors while we're watching it live on YouTube. <laughs> you see the con. You see the con. Fletch App is not a white label company. It is the product. It's the white labeled product. It's a product being white labeled, essentially. It's not, it's not him. So he's trying to piggyback off of the success. I find it very interesting. Very interesting. You guys caught that. Let me let me run that back, baby. And this guy is asking pretty sharp questions. They're the largest university in America. What is that? I, I didn't say their name because uh, we're actually white labeling for them. Okay, yeah. so I got it. But is it? Is, but is, is I'll it, tell you, they're headquartered here. Okay, so it's I a. I don't know which one. You, you, <laughs> you didn't code shit. So chat. When I had in that first video, when I said, show me your source code so I can so I can look it over. When I asked them, I'm like, hey, yo, you invented this app, right? You coded this app, right? Show me your source code. Let's take a look at it. Mm, you said, why would I show a loser my source code? Well, I know why, because it's not your code. It's not your material. You didn't develop it. You don't have those files. You just white labeled the entire thing. That, that was that's, that was what you did. And we could sniff that out. And here you are on the p investor pitch, basically admitting that. Hey, well, you're not even admitting that because you're trying to be slick with it. You're lying to him. And I know this guy smells bullshit. You're lying to him. You're saying you licensed your Fletch app to a largest university in the Midwest. And then when he pressed you on it, no, 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 we're actually white labeling it, but I can't tell you the company name. You know why he doesn't say the name? Because if he says the name and they look it up, they'll realize it's not Fletch App doing it. No, you guys can do the research right now live. It wasn't it. I can't believe he's lying <laughs> like to, to, to these people, like right in front of us, bro. On university then. <laughs> that's right, and they do okay. a lot of hybrid programs. Right, mm -hmm. got it. Yes. So, um, good, because I, I was that's what I was thinking it had to be, so right. something like that. Right. And the guy the guy picked it up. He's like, it has to be something like that. So so how do you guys, so I'm, I missed the money-making part. All right, so, <laughs> so you're licensing this to who, if I'm a student, I'm not paying for this, right? Students don't like paying for anything. Right. That's right. Right. <laughs> so so if, I'm, if I'm getting this and I have, and it has access to the curriculum and stuff like that, that means that you are working with the institutions almost on a one-off basis, right? So you basically got to close everybody, you know, you've been... Depends on how you look at it. <laughs> but you are doing the deal with the university. That's right. We do the deal directly with the university, yeah, okay. typically through the Office of Retention, which have right. huge budgets specifically allocated for this. Right. Um, and the goal, actually, the reason we <laughs> decided to strategically work with the number one community college and also the largest uh, university in America is because they're influencers and people will follow them. And wow. once we can do that, we can get community college systems to close. We can get state <laughs> systems to close. And that's ultimately our goal. But you're right. We sell directly to the Office of Retention. So the two biggest problems I, I can see. just Pay attention. Just pay attention. Thinking, is one is the app business dead? You okay. know, is that is that is that a risk? You know, just that there's so many apps. You know that that would to me seem like maybe that's a little bit of a risk. And the other thing is, everybody's going after this, trying to make the models work on the education side. And I understand why, because it has to be done. That's right. like, well, there's like, a lot of opportunity to to sort of shake it up. Yeah, still. it's a wide there's market. A, it's yeah. a wide yeah. market, as we yeah, say. Yeah. But but you need. You know, and there's so there's a lot of people challenging like the existing educational models, trying to make it better. Make you know, for e each person something a little bit different. That's Yours right. a little mm -hmm. bit different. Yeah. So that's just what I wanted you to address for me, and then I'm good. Certainly. So <laughs> just yesterday, I was in St. Louis at a, a nursing college uh, training some administrators, and the interesting thing you say the app business might be dead. In the education sphere, mobile apps are not a thing. Hey, you guys noticed he said he was in St. Louis, right? You know, so St. Louis, the reason why he was there, he wasn't training nurses or anything like that. St. Louis is where Art Grants is located. St. Louis is where, uh, uh, St. Louis or Missouri is where they're located.
he was there. That's the only reason why he was in St. Louis. And he's trying to use that to pick these fools up. Bro, I'm on his ass. They don't pay for mobile apps. Right. So, in fact, this is the first time this college has ever licensed a technology that's mobile-based. And it's because of a variety of reasons. Like, do you download it from the App Store? Can we force students to put something on their own personal device? So yeah. this is actually quite new in the higher education market. So it's really going to be alive and thriving. And yeah, I didn't really mean dead, like, you know, there's no more app business. Sure. I just meant more that we're just running out of space. You know, some people don't download. They're, they're, people are much more focused well, on fewer apps. It just apps ends now. up getting, sure. it, yeah. you, there's a lot of noise. Yeah. Yes. Oh, undoubtedly. And the way we take out the noise is that we, we're, we're a unique approach. So our industry is dominated by the likes of Blackboard or Starfish Solutions, which are all web applications, but most importantly, they're administrator tools. Mm -hmm. We're the only one that's a student when we look at unique metrics that no one else has, i.e., we can tell you if students are actually going to class, if they're showing up on campus, if they've made friends, um, all these different metrics that no one else can speak to. And so that's how we differentiate ourselves with our backend analytics. Got it. Okay. So, and did you Cap. say that, so the schools pay for it, but the students don't? That's right. Right. And so how do you actually get the, you know, and hopefully because they're paying for it, they'd push the yes. app, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's you hope right. for. But how do you ensure that happens? Because you, I saw on your presentation, your percentage the, on the last one, it looks like your percentage, you say we target, you know, 11,000 users and you achieve 10,000 installs. I mean, that's a really great conversion, yes. right? You only had 900 downloads. 10,000 install installs are from the white label company. You're using their presentation. He's using their PowerPoint. You know that, right? Right, and then you still have a, a high percentage of actually active users. That's right. But to ensure that continues to happen and everywhere you go, I mean, how do you? So I think it'll probably get better because it, this was our beta. I think it'll probably get better, right? Right. I, I think it probably let me let me let me let me go back to her. Well, let me just let, let, let's just see what she's got to say. Installs. I mean, that's a really great conversion. Yes. Right. And then you still have a, a high percentage of actually active users. That's right. But to ensure that continues to happen and everywhere you go, I mean, how do you. So I think it'll probably get better because it, this was our beta. This mm -hmm. is our beta data that we achieved without buy in from colleges. So this is when we were in step one trying to figure out, can we create something that students love to use? Mm -hmm. And so we literally went to professors said, hey, we have an app that's going to allow students to organize study groups, get quick answers. And hey, you don't have to do anything as a professor reduces your workload. They said, sure, tell them about it. Mm -hmm. And this is students downloading the app with no mandate from the university. So now that we have our university partners, our clients, and they're pushing it on their side, and we also have the student side, I think we'll see really high usership, especially as uh, education becomes more transactional and people are part time they need quick answers mm -hmm. we're going to be the go-to solution but isn't there a lot of setup that has to happen in some regards for the professors at least at like at the beginning of the semester no, or anything that, like that's that that's a really okay. cool thing so as i said i was in st louis uh training mm -hmm. some administrators um no you are i could get through the uh, presentation they're already using it and, and laughing and these are people who are 40 years old 50 mm -hmm. years old and so if they can use it quickly that lets us know we have a very streamlined user experience and in fact the student could download it right now even if we don't have a deal with their college get on board mm -hmm. bring on their classmates and then off the races yeah 40 50 years old we could even use it <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know about you <laughs> That's so, so help me with this yeah. so i'm a kid going to school for the first time freshman sophomore whatever it is yes, sir. and i'm sitting in a you big fast for that <laughs> i know no, no. what was that movie with riding danger fields back to school oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i actually saw that one too yeah and yeah. I saw Fletch. <laughs> I mean, she never sees any movies, so this okay. is incredible. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so so let's say you're a first or second year student, and and it is. I agree with you. There's a, there's an intimidation factor. Most of us are okay with it, but you know, I, I get the part that part. But then, so so what what am I doing? What do I look? What so I load this app up, and I mean, what am I looking for? People that what? Sure. So you you load the app up. There's yeah. a number of things you can do. Just tell me through, uh, like, what what am I going to do on this app? Right, yeah, so answer the question, bro. What are you going to do? App, you join yeah. your school, join your classes. Yeah, sure. You're all set. It's 2 a.m. You're cramming for a midterm. You're like, yeah. oh, I don't know what's going on. You take a picture of your your econ prompt. Said, Hey, I'm on number three. Uh, can anyone help? Do you understand what I'm doing wrong? Or you could be in the lecture <laughs> office. That girl on the third row is very attractive. I'd like to invite her to a study group. I think I need to re re review genetic drift and recombination. She's like an expert. Yeah. Um, you, you can private message. You can group message. But the number one thing is when you need those quick answers, when you're stuck. Secondly, organizing study groups. And here's the last part that's hugely important. Uh, as a student, you will receive push notifications of resources that are relevant to you. So you might get a notification saying, hey, Tom, uh, did you know that there's tutoring 
uh, for Chemistry 405 on Thursday at 4 o'clock. Click yes to attend or, hey, did you complete your financial aid FAFSA? And if you click no, then we're going to put you in contact with a counselor who can help you. complete. So that. basically it's a glorified forum. So all the student support services that are going to enrich your experience, but ensure that you're supported and you graduate. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. He's liking that girl in the third row or whatever it was. That's what he keeps thinking about. <laughs> I yeah. wish I had that when I was Nobody in ever <laughs> private messaged me and said, I really want to meet that guy in the third row. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that didn't happen to me. Okay. So the... Um, can you actually expand this to, well, and maybe it wouldn't work like in high schools. I mean, I'm just trying to think, you know, there's, there's colleges and universities, Certainly. right? But is this something that you can go? That's that you definitely can something we want to do. Uh, and in fact, we're currently working with a, a number of nonprofits, some of which are actually local, uh, to bring it to high schools. And the reason that's not a part of our uh, early adopter is because, uh, number one, they're, they're not going to be spending the money. Uh, the class sizes are significantly smaller. And there's a lot of bureaucracy. <laughs> so it's free. We want high school students to use it because... They have to learn to study like college students before they get to college. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem in college, you have to study 30 hours a week. So there's a lot of independent study and peer study. In high school, they only average five hours of study a week. So we do want upper high school students using Fletch. We think it'll be the bridge to university. Yeah. One of the one of the great things that um, my daughter has is an app that the, but it's for us. It's, okay. it's so oh, we really? can see the grades. She can see the grades. Sure. And so you can see the constant progress. I mean, yeah. it'd be awesome too to sort of have that, you know, have that integrated. How do you lie to your parents then? I, I don't. It's rough for them, right? So, so he can't integrate that because it's not his app. <laughs> he doesn't have any control over that. It's a white label product. He didn't code that. He's not a technologist. He he doesn't have any programming knowledge whatsoever, bro. All right. Listen, unless you're talking about NFT, all right. Maybe he knows about NFT from the command line. But I'm not sure what else we're talking about here because this guy went to school to be a teacher and got a political science degree. I didn't see any computer science or anything, even just base level. Like, there's none of that in there. But yet he's qualified to sell. Bro, this is what happened. You, he is sweating. I have never seen him sweat like this since or even being this pressed since he was being pressed by destiny on stream okay i have not seen lord marco i be this pressed on an interview than when he was on stream with destiny okay only this time bro you can't mute these people because you want their money right you can't mute them <laughs> uh general uh general tito shout out to you for the five dollars super chat he says i'm from chicago he says that boy ain't no pimp ain't got no pimping under his belt yo i'm still trying to find out you, you heard him. He said he went to community college at 16, right? Check it. Check it, General Tito, right? If you went to community college at 16, I'm assuming from community college, you, you went on to like John Hopkins or UC Berkeley, right? One of these schools, right? So where in between that, where you a pimp, right? Like, where did you get the pimp knowledge, right? I want to know because from where I'm standing, it doesn't seem like you have the time to do that while, unless he was pimping while he was in community school, <laughs> We don't know, bro. It's just it, you see what I'm saying. You come on YouTube, you can just say anything. Apparently, like it is what it is. But I'm still trying. Unless he was pimping at 14, in that case, that's like damn, bro. <laughs> it just got it hard. But hey, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I asked myself that question. Hey, you helped me figure it out. You from Chicago, so you know. You, hey, that's that's actually a, a, a couple of, you stone throw away because I'm in Wisconsin. I'm in Madison, so we we about like what an hour, hour and a half from each other. So listen. I'm just saying, I, you tell me, because I don't know when the pimping started or where it ended. But apparently on YouTube, he's some kind of pimp. So uh, <laughs> let's continue. They just say they didn't post the grades okay. yet. <laughs> so so what's the down? So so where, where are the obstacles to success? You just money, you're too small. I mean, you can't get the scale you need to make this work. Because this is scale. Obviously, all business are scale, but this is scale sure. business. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, and what are the other obstacles? Is there competition? Like, I just don't know the space. Sure. I'd say the number one obstacle is getting colleges to understand what we do, differentiating ourselves. We're obviously different because we're mobile. And the first thing you say, oh, wow, we've, we've never used a mobile app. Yeah, well, I can students. understand why they don't care unless yeah. you unless you make Blackboard has a mobile application. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Adrian. The very strong retention argument and show them the numbers. That's right. Yeah. Um, but it, it's understanding that we're different. We're not Blackboard and we plug into systems like Blackboard. And that's the number one thing is understanding. But once we get that understanding, it's very straight. So it's not me saying it. He's trying to, his app is supposed to compete with Blackboard. 
Blackboard is such a massive, robust system. You're not competing with that, bro. And that's where this guy is getting at. You think you're talking to idiots? These guys aren't stupid. They obviously know. You're not competing with Blackboard. Blackboard already has an integrated. In, bro, I work at a university. It's so fucking integrated in some of the tools that a lot of the students use, bro. It's not even funny. Like, you're not competing with that. <laughs> you're just not, dude. Like, even if Blackboard, I, I don't care how many times how many issues people have with Blackboard, all right, whether it's with uh, uh, Microsoft Edge or uh, Chrome, whatever browser they're using at the time, okay? I'm telling you right now, they're killing the game, okay? They're not, you're not, your Fletch app ain't doing shit, and they know it. They understand that, bro. Just relax. Forward in as much as we're saying, hey, a student's worth $45,000 for you. We help you retain them, but more importantly than that, you're spending millions of dollars on all of your student support services. We help you better leverage those resources so we can increase the number of people who go in to see your tutors. We can increase the number of conversion rates on students using financial aid. So we're going to help you bring you know, greater efficiency to those existing resources. So it makes a lot of sense when we explain it to them. Hmm. I like that. Okay. So this is kind of a, a social good. You know, there's a social good component to this, right? Yeah, definitely. yeah but you can't and have both. Do, you, well, you just remember, uh, there's no, there's no social good. Dude, this good. guy is smart. Is is she saying? Well, this company it sounds like a social charity, bro. It kind of sounds like a social good. And the guy's like, well, yeah, but you can't have a social good and then have something that makes money. Those two things can't exist. This nigga is based. I like him. He understands business. He sees the sham. <laughs> All right, you you're not making money with this app, guaranteed, bro. To ours, of course it's, we do, but we're still a business, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, I know, but there's there's still that social good. That's why I said component, right? Yeah. Um, but so you guys got into Impact Engine. Have that's you gone right. through? You've gone through that already. Yes, it was a great experience, and we worked with world class mentors. It's fantastic. How'd you like the mentoring process? You know, it's phenomenal. Engine and was one person that always stands out is Sam Dros Yegan. Uh, Founder of OKCupid, okay mm -hmm. obviously very intelligent, but um, it's rare that you run into those people who say, "Hey, yeah, yeah, you're great," but here's what's really wrong. And this that is what office you need to it was in that's impact engine. And he, he's laser focused, very blunt, and ensures that you're moving forward. And he told us, he said, "Hey, I might not give you a million dollars, but I can save you a million dollars because of the experience I've had." And so we've been honored to learn from folks like that, and I think it'll allow us to build a strong business. Good. Good. That's great. So you're out of 1871 today. That's right. Well, this morning I actually uh, came in because I, I had to do some training yesterday in St. Louis. But yeah, that's where we're, we're based in 1871. But so the rest of your team is not all located in Chicago. That's right. So so we have two. Hey, Tito, that's your hey, that's your area, bro. That's your area, Tito. Employees in Chicago, mm -hmm. and then we have one employee in Charlotte, which is good for us because it reduces amount of travel when we have someone there on the East Coast to manage mm -hmm. that front. Got it. That's good. We um. I just finished a class on entrepreneurship last night okay. and uh, um, I mean, I was teaching and so it was interesting because I was trying to relate financial statistics back to, you know, entrepreneurs and or budding entrepreneurs similar to your situation, you know, sure. all different fields from restaurants to, to trading to, to different cosmetic businesses, whatever it, it didn't matter to me, whatever sure. it is. And I talked about just a, a variety of um, things that we've learned by being able to have access to lots of data and research over the years, how are you, how are you using, how are you using kind of not necessarily big data, but how are you using statistics, probabilities, sure. just there, there's so many changes in, it doesn't matter whether it's sports or business or okay. politics or anything else. We've entered into an era where everything has, you know, pretty strong, um statistical logic by pro you can you can predict there's there's a predictability to certain things that's right how are you doing that like like with your startup and and i'm glad you asked that um so everyone talks about big data and we don't do big data we do critical <laughs> data meaning sometimes you only need a certain number of data points to really uh shed light on a situation in our <laughs> the man is throwing you a bone dog hey there's data like listen there's big data out there, all right, all right, based on students' attendance. Uh, they're, they're basically uh, how much money these colleges are getting. There's a bunch of data out there that you can use to help at least figure out the trajectory of where your company is going to be in the future, all right? So how are you using these big industry data, right, to basically guide your company for growth? Lord Marquardt. Uh, well, actually, we don't focus on big data. Uh, we actually focus on critical data. We, we, we think small is better because why not, right? Let's just 
focus on the critical points, right? <laughs> What a fucking retard. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was so sorry. Look at his face. <laughs> he, he doesn't even believe in that answer. <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> this is a face of someone who realizes, yeah, I'm not going home with some funding tonight, baby. Like, this is this is not happening tonight. <laughs> we focus on critical data. That is not the question he asked, bro field, we find that companies aren't doing anything unique and that they're pointing out the usual, usual suspects, you know, students of color, first generation students, part-time students as the ones being at risk. But the student that's really hard to identify is the lower class white male, uh, from economic class that is, right? Yeah. Uh, so because obviously the overwhelming majority of students that attend university are white. Um, so it's hard to figure out which of these middle class or lower middle class white males is likely to drop out. No, they're not white. They're Chinese. Chinese are the overwhelming attendance of like universities all over the place, bro. Like, that's not that's not even like. And why are we focused on white males? <laughs> like white males, we already know, like in terms of college enrollment, it's it's in a decline right now. It's it's severely in a decline for women. It's great. For black women, it's great. Uh, black men, I think it's kind of like I think either decline or stagnant. But. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> because they don't fit the typical des description. We use our data, i.e. looking at how often they come onto campus, if they're actually attending class, uh, <laughs> if they've made friends, um, their content um, mastery. And these are all things that we're looking at in real time, <laughs> the behaviors that accumulate to success. And these are the data points that no one else has. But won't the people that, won't the people that are most at risk be the ones that don't use your platform? Fact! No, actually, interestingly, so we base our theory of change by great research by Dr. Yuri Treisman and many others. Uh, interestingly, students of color actually have higher usage rates of social media than any other demographic. And what we are is essential, essentially social media for the school. And so we've seen really good usership rates at our colleges. Uh, for example, our community college in Southern California, a program called Black Academia, exceptional usership rates. And also the neat thing is that not only is it students interacting with peers, it's also- at But if you're for black students, I, I thought you wanted to focus on the uh, attendance rate of uh, white kids. Like, what, what? So, what are we doing here? Why, why are we bouncing back and forth? Some, something's not right. Administration now having a way to reach out to students, mm -hmm. and so it's bidirectional. There's also just one other quick thing on that. So, um, technology is great, right? Yeah. Push notifications are great, That's right. but sometimes there's just that really personal interaction you need to have right. to be able to take them over the fence, right? And so, so how do they how do they make that happen? I mean, at least they're still in contact, but if they're not losing the, I mean, I assume you guys encourage that that outreach of yes. just personal. Bro, these are good questions. I'm one of those technologists who actually doesn't really like technology. <laughs> Actually, I'm a technologist, but I don't like technology. <laughs> I'm trying to sell you on my application, but I don't like what I do. <laughs> oh, no, bro. I can't, dog. This dude's fucking stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I don't like technology. <laughs> you know, this thing I'm trying to sell you, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Yo, this dude is getting beat up with these questions, dog. They're beating him up with these questions. He has no clue how to answer them. This is funny as hell. Yo, I got to play that back. I didn't even notice, bro. Hold up. I got to see what she says. <laughs> Hold up. Having a way to reach out to students. And so it's bi-directional. There's also just one other quick thing on that. So um, technology is great, right? Yeah. Push notifications are great. Right. But sometimes there's just that really personal interaction you need to have right. to be able to take them over the fence, right? And so so how do they how do they make that happen? I mean, at least they're still in contact, but if they're 
not losing the, I mean, I assume you guys encourage that, that outreach of yes. just personal touch. Yeah. And, and I'm one of those technologists who actually doesn't really like technology. <laughs> um, in fact, most of what we do is to facilitate the in-person connection, whether it's me inviting you and five other people to a study group and we meet up, mm -hmm. execute it, learn, but make friends, which is really important. And then the last piece is uh, a typical state college, like the ones we went to have 600 to one advisor to student ratio. And so we tell them in a given week, if you can only talk to 20 people, here are the 20 people you should really talk to. And so we can say, hey, these are the ones in the red zone. Pick up a phone, give them a call, and figure out what's going on with Tom, what's going on with Sharon, whatever the case may be. And so that's how we're facilitating that connection and making it meaningful and empowering people to use their time most effectively. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The site is FletchApp.com. That's us. You were awesome, and it was a great story. And uh, Thanks for sharing it with us. Yeah. Certainly. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, they not paying you, bro. <laughs> they not. Hey, bro, they not. They they not taking the bait. <laughs> they you did not. You did not win that one. <laughs> if this is the same shit you went to all these other universities with that with that kind of same pitch, bro, I see why you only got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The smart ones not. I don't. I can't believe those people even gave you money. Like that's crazy. With that kind of like that was a horrible elevator pitch my boy and you could you did horrible on those questions i mean what kind of technologists don't even like technology bro i mean who what kind of technology has a political science degree it's not even a basic computer science degree that's that's wild you didn't even go to school to even just do anything remotely close to technology it's just it, it's just <laughs> asinine to me bro but like i said before okay this guy takes his marketing to you know completely different levels because one of the things he likes to beat some of the, uh uh his other uh you know competitors on youtube or even his audience over the head with is that he was on fox news even some of his fanboys right if you if you confront him they'll say oh well you know i've never seen anyone who has been more decorated on so uh, on media mainstream media than lord marquard he was on fox news uh-huh right and sometimes you'll even hear lord marquard say i was in forbes I was on Fox. I was on these big mainstream media platforms. Well, uh, first things first. No, it's not Fox. It's actually um, Fox News Ozarks. Yeah, it's a, it's a discount version, like the Walmart brand, okay? So don't forget it. Uh, but he goes on here with the same pitch. But this one, it was skewed towards the uh, eye beacon. Now, remember, I told you guys, this technology, right, this eye beacon here, right, he's claiming... He's claiming that he invented this technology, this iBeacon technology. That's what he's claiming. He's saying that Fletch app, Lord Marquard, Marquette Devon Burton, right? The saint and the loser. He invented this, all right? And he takes this to Fox to let them know. The lies don't stop, bro. It don't stop. Let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear him out. Let, let's uh, hear him out. Kids will be going back to school, and safety is always a concern for parents and school staff. And that's the topic of our conversation tonight. We have all heard stories of things like students getting on the wrong bus or getting off at the wrong stop, children hiding or falling asleep in the bus, and bus drivers don't see them or fail to inspect. Well, one app promises to address that safety concern, among other things. It's called Fletch. It's an app. It's using technology to solve these problems and to help prevent these situations from happening. Marquette, Marquette Burton is the creator of Fletch, and he's here with us now to explain how this works. Marquette, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So explain what Fletch is. How does it work? Fletch is a very simple technology. We use this long-range Bluetooth device we can put inside of a classroom, or in this case, inside of a bus, and basically leave it there for three years. No one needs to touch it. No one needs to know what's there. When the students get onto the bus, it can detect the presence of their mobile phone or their tablet, their iPad, and instantly, down to the minute, minute log them onto the bus. And then when they get off, log them out. That way, both the parents and the school know that the students are accounted for, they got on safely, and arrived at their destination. So this would be connected to a device that students are carrying, for example, an iPad, if it's provided by the school, or maybe even a phone and that they have their personal phone, something like that? You're 100% correct, because 
I'd say even five years ago, 2014, uh, Kansas City and Missouri, they went one to one. So one device for every student. So a lot of schools around the nation are going one to one, meaning that the school will give the kid a free device, typically a tablet because they're low cost. So once a student gets on and they have their tablet in their backpack, this device will detect the presence of their tablet on that bus and instantly log them in. And even parents can track them? That's right. With through an app on their phones? How That's right. That they work? can log on through their phone or either on our uh, web application and see that their student is basically where they're supposed to be. Now, you also said this would work for classrooms, not just for getting on and off the bus, but even classrooms for attendance or even to know if students where they are in a for example, a safety or dangerous situation in, in the school. Can you explain how that would work in the classroom? Certainly. That's actually how we started. Fletch started as a effortless attendance tech. Hey, 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 you see what he's holding his hand? Huh? You guys see that? Huh? Uh, wait a minute now. Uh, that, that, looks, that looks very familiar. Uh, I, that looks kind of familiar, bro. <laughs> I, I see what he's holding his hand. That kind of looks familiar, bro. Huh? Let me, let me go ahead and zoom in there. Look at that. That, that looks kind of familiar. Watch this. Technology. So similarly, once the student walks into the classroom, it'll detect their presence. And at a lot of institutions, we actually put these devices outside of classrooms as well throughout the entirety of a school campus. And as you mentioned, the safety implications, if unfortunately, say there was an active shooter, you'd be able to instantly account for every single student and know precisely where they are on that campus. It's almost like Google search in the physical world if you wanted to type in a that, student's hey, name. Hey, 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 look at that, right? Guys, look at that. It, it seems like somebody <laughs> don't that look familiar? <laughs> Just, hey, don't this don't this look familiar to y'all? Hold up, time up. <laughs> it just seems like it's missing something, right? <laughs> right, y'all? Doesn't it look familiar? I don't you y'all tell me. <laughs> y'all tell me, dog. Does it look familiar? Or or, or maybe 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 he did invent this by himself. I don't I don't know. You say, okay, that student is in the restroom or that student is in hallway wing. East Wing. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it, it's quite a convenient technology, especially where safety is concerned. But in that case, then the students would have to have the device with them, either carrying it or in a backpack or something, correct? That's correct. So typically it'll work from their, uh, their iPad or their tablet. But in other cases, if you like with our younger kids, we also have little um, Bluetooth devices that we can put on a key ring that they can you know, keep in their pocket, kind of like a lanyard, something like that. Are there any concerns with uh, privacy? Is this kind of like a GPS tracker? That's a really good question. In fact, we designed this technology to be privacy respecting. And so- Whoa, whoa, wait, hey, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. You, you, you did what? Hold up, I, did, I didn't hear that. I didn't, wait, wait a minute now. That, that's, <laughs> something don't sound right. I gotta play that back. All right. We design this technology to be privacy respecting. Cap. Cap. You didn't design shit, you lying ass bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. He's yo, when Destiny called this dude a scammer, he has no idea. He has no idea how deep this shit goes, bro. We were the first one to expose this shit. We it took us 25 minutes to uncover all this bullshit. And, and we're not even done. <laughs> so we're not even remotely goes being done, bro. It gets worse than this. All right. I just wanted to expose the fact that, like, listen, dog, this whole Fletch thing was a sham. <laughs> this is all it was. It was a sham. It wasn't real. It wasn't, it was just, it was a get rich quick scheme for Lord Marquand. He thought he was going to do something, but then when he knew that the company was not going to make money because y'all saw the presentation itself, y'all heard his whole elevator pitch. There's no money making, like, there's no way this app could make money. He knew that. Investors knew that. I, I don't know if the investors did, because if you're dumb enough to invest in that, well... Well, then you got to also look at the people who are dumb enough to invest in FTX. So I, I, I guess, I guess you can, you blame the investors. I don't know. I, I it's, a, it's a tough question. Okay. We just don't know. But the fact that the matter is like, listen, those guys lost money on a shit product that wasn't going to make money. And this guy's over here talking about, oh no, I'm, I'm the best. Yeah. I, I invented that. Yeah. I'm on Fox news. I'm on everywhere, but you, you on Fox news line. You lying, bro. You didn't invent that. The iBeacon has always been a thing.
you can get it for fifteen dollars on Alibaba. You know that, right? <laughs> this is fifteen bucks on Alibaba, my dog. Like, holy fucking shit, dude! Like, how much cap can we just sit through, dude? Like, like really, really. But we're not done. We're not done exposing this dude. We're, we're just not. We're not done yet. All right, we gonna put that back in line. All right. So one of the main things that he likes to talk about is his uh, whole Forbes situation, right? He was on Forbes. OK, and he's going to reference this a lot because, guys, obviously, we know uh, why not wasn't going to do too well. We, we knew why not was done. It was Gonzo. OK, around this time, he had a company that he was starting up called Why Not? Only he wasn't going to be the CEO of this company. Lord Marquardt himself, you know, he, he's going to take off the Fletch at he's going to take off the Fletch app hat and put on the Why Not hat. OK, so now he's going to be running the company, but not as a CEO, because he's currently the CEO of Fletch app right now. OK, so keep that in mind. He's the current CEO of Fletch app and you don't want, you know, to see a CEO running two companies, you know, they're going to be distracted. But he decides to put someone else in charge of why not app. OK, and uh, this person is called um, what's her name? Miriam Martin. Right. And Miriam Martin is going to be the the she was she's the chief. Like she's the the CEO and app developer, all right, of Why Not App, and uh, you would be surprised who was their uh employee, the chief technology officer. So let's read this, okay? Now, first things first, this new internet sharing app could help neighbors get online for less, all right. Written by Hillary Bruneck, who is no longer a, a Forbes contributor, all right. She was a former contributor, uh, but what does the contributor mean? And that this means that opinions expressed by Forbes contributors are their own right meaning that they they're they're the opinions of hillary not forbes themselves so forbes isn't vouching for this guy hillary is what that tells me is hillary got probably got paid by lord marquard to write this article i digress let's uh read on okay oj paranone used to pay about 150 dollars a month for his cable internet phone and tv package but last month he scrapped his deal and paid an anonymous neighbor in brooklyn about 20 bucks to snag a chunk of their internet bandwidth instead i don't know this person who this person is paramount said but you know thank you he's one of the most handful beta testers who was trying out a new why not internet service debuting citywide next month september 14th in new york starting this week new yorkers can register to share their internet connection on the app they'll make 15 dollars a month when subscribers sign up to use their network once provider and neighbor are connected to the app via the app they communicate on an anonymous messenger service to exchange the wi-fi name and password it saves costs for me and lessens the burden for the provider paramount said i think sharing is caring what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that? Oh my god! I feel like this. I feel like this is made up. <laughs> this is made up. Who says that? Who says that? And by the way, uh, anyone who has a base level of understanding and technology will realize why it's a bad idea to share your internet with anybody. Just anybody. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but anyways, uh, he says. Uh, he said the he's not planning to return to his cable package anytime soon. Mark Graham agrees with Paramount that it's a great and able to share your uh, unused resources like internet bandwidth with your neighbors. He studies how internet is changing everyday life at the Oxford Internet Institute. My worry is, though, that this helps to contribute to the way in which we're increasingly commodifying every aspect of modern life, from selling the space in your garden to renting spare rooms to filling the spare hours of your life doing microwork, Grime wrote in an email. The Why Not app was created by a budding coder, a budding coder, Marion Martin, okay, who is part of a four-person team. Martin, who was raised in a small time, small Mennonite community. Martin, who was raised in a small Mennonite community in some obscure town somewhere. Pay attention to that. It's going to come very important. OK, says when she was growing up, education wasn't a priority. <laughs> OK, uh, now that she's a mother herself, she says she wants the Internet to be more accessible to low income children and families who need it all right oh oh, oh oh hey 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 wait a minute hey wait a minute this guy looks familiar hey guys uh doesn't this guy look familiar uh can i zoom in <laughs> hold on let me zoom in doesn't this guy look familiar guys uh, who, <laughs> who, 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 who that remind you of 
Huh? I, I see this. This. You know what else? This lady also looks familiar. Where have I seen this girl before? Oh wait. Oh 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 wait. Oh wait a minute. Oh, Miriam. I wreck. I was gonna say, bro, because this girl looks hella familiar. Where have I seen her before? And what is this? She's the app developer, and the chief technology officer is Marquette Devon Burton. Oh, by the way, she's the one who provided this photo. Look how happy he is, guys. Don't you see how happy this guy is? Look at him. A smile on his face. <laughs> He's all ready to go as a new chief technology officer, all right? This guy is getting ready to, to code something. Oh, wait, no, he didn't even code it, all right? She did, apparently. A mother from a Mennonite community somehow learned coding to develop an app that's Wi-Fi sharing, right? <laughs> I, I, I didn't even prioritize the education, though. That, that's very interesting. Uh, I wonder where she found the time to do that. Uh, but apparently she did. Oh, wait, but 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 she's also working for another startup called Fletch App, which has the C the guy as a CEO. So <laughs> I'm so confused. Guys, I hope you know this. Uh by this time, right? By this time frame, uh Fletch App was going under. It was in the middle of closing up. It was middle of closing up shop. So keep that in mind. While I'm reading this article over here, Fletch app was in the middle of closing up shop. So don't even get it twisted, bro. This is all happening within the same time. And you see how the employees are being swapped around. You want to talk about a fucking fraud when you see one, right? So she's currently working for Fletch, but she's a C uh, the app developer and CEO of a company that this guy who's supposed to be the CEO, her boss of this other company, is now the employee of this new company that he started. That's very interesting. All the while, Fletch app is going under. Wow. Wow. So when you look into Miriam Martin, aside from a LinkedIn, you don't really find a whole lot of information, right? Um, but then again, you know, you got to look deeper, right? So what happens if you try to figure out what why not is, right? Well, you look around, you don't really, aside from this Forbes article, you don't really find a whole lot of information on why not or, or really anything it's, it's involved in or where the growth went or where even the, where the company went. Did, did it sell? Did it dissolve? Actually, spoiler alert. It dissolved. We could prove that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, but did it sell? Where did where this mysterious why not company go? We didn't know, right? Was it purchased by a new owner, right? Did it have a new owner? And then again, I was doing some research. And I'm like, God, why can't I find anything about this why not app? What the fuck, right? And then I was like, holy shit, wait a minute. Let me check YouTube most basic bitch search engine out there right for videos <laughs> you guys should check it out some of you guys who are following these red pill youtubers how about you go do some research seeking you shall find i live by that tenant baby so i was looking around and i said okay well holy shit Ho whoa wait a minute now i see something this is why not and I don't know, but this guy looks kind of familiar. I feel like I've seen him before. I don't know where I've seen this guy before, but he looks hella familiar right now. But let's see what he has to say, because why not? Wait a minute. Something's different, though. Guys, can you spot the difference? Because uh, this guy over here that has why not, it seems like there's CEO next to his name. But that, that that's weird. That That's really weird, because I thought she was a CEO. I, I I thought she ran the whole deal, but anyways, I digress. Let's see. Let's see what. Let's see what Gabe has to say about why not. A woman one night outside of a closed McDonald's at eleven o'clock, cell phone in one arm, baby in the other, and I couldn't help but ask, "Hey, is everything okay?" And she responded, "Yeah, it's fine. I'm just using the Wi-Fi." There are over sixty million Americans living like this woman with no home internet, largely due to the fact that we have some of the highest internet costs in the world. My name is Gabe Owens, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Why Nots. All right, he said it. He's a CEO and co-founder, and he seems like he's talking about the same article we just read, an internet Wi-Fi sharing application, correct? So, um, huh. So what happened, what happened to Miriam? <laughs> did, did Gabe buy her out? Is that what happened? Where did... Why don't we ever hear of Miriam again? <laughs> what happened to her, right? Who the fuck is Gabe, dog? Like, I don't know who the fuck Gabe is. I'm used to Miriam. Uh, where did she go? I mean, she was a single mother who was an app developer that created the Why Not app, and then you got Gabe running it now? What? A, but Miriam, 
coded the app. It said so in the Forbes article, right? Uh, guys, am I tripping or what? Or did it not say that in the Forbes article? <laughs> it said that in the Forbes article, she 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 uh, coded it, right? So her her a budding coder. That's what it said. A budding coder, Miriam Martin, who's part of a four person team. She was raised in a small Mennonite community. Says when she was growing up, education wasn't a priority. Uh, go figure. <laughs> but hey, now she's a mother herself. Says so she wants to be the internet. Or she says she wants the internet to be more accessible to low-income families who need it. And that's her. She's in next to her uh, chief technology officer. But that's freaking weird because uh, over here it seems like Gabe is the CEO. So I, I'm wondering what happened to. Uh, I'm wondering what happened to Miriam. Uh, but I digress. Okay, Gabe. Uh, let's continue. Let, let's see. I mean, why not? It may have been successful, right? Let's continue. A marketplace that is empowering neighbors to share their Wi-Fi. Hmm. What is a map-based web application? That allows you to subscribe to your neighbor's Wi-Fi for a mere twenty dollars a month. Now we'll be taking about a four dollar commission from each user each month. Forbes even wrote an article on our highly successful beta test. He said Forbes wrote an article on their highly successful beta test. Wait a minute, is it this guy? Is this this Forbes article that Gabe's talking about? I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Can somebody can somebody tell me like which Forbes article? It may be a different one because I don't see Gabe's face on there. Matter of fact, I don't see Gabe's face anywhere. I I, I see I see Miriam and Miriam's face looks very fucking familiar to me because she used to work for uh, Lord Marquardt and Fletch when he was a CEO or still the CEO. This is during while Fletch is going under. By the way, all this bullshit is happening. All and meanwhile, behind the scenes, Fletch is going going belly up. Just saying, bro. So, um, Gabe, what are you talking about, bro? It lost launched a hundred users in New York. Why not help your neighbor share your Wi-Fi and make a few extra bucks? Hold up, users in New York. Forbes even wrote an article. Be taking about a four dollar commission from each user each month. Hold up. Forbes even wrote an article on our highly successful beta test. It would launch the hundred users in New York. Yeah, Why we're talking about the same article. Neighbor, share your Wi-Fi and make a few extra bucks. Oh, thank you so much, Gabe. I appreciate you. All right. Um, but hang on, wait a minute. First, a company that's supposed to be as <laughs> as big as it is. Uh, I mean, why is your YouTube channel only getting fucking 113 views? Like what what's going on here? Like why why is it what why is it getting 113 views and only two likes? Brother, let me help you out. There you go. Right there. Hey, you can't say niggas are hating now. All right. Y'all saw that live, okay? Brothers ain't hating out here. We gotta we gotta support brothers out here, all right? <laughs> we just got to do it. Uh uh Philip, Philip said, Hey, uh, can't find the app anywhere. Oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not that's not good at all. <laughs> okay, well let's let's see if they have any other videos. Let's check out their YouTube channel. Oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> it's a game. What the fuck? What's going on? Hi, my name is Gabe Owens. I'm CEO and co-founder of Why Not. I'm currently a student here at Washington University in St. Louis, where I'm majoring in leadership and strategic management. St. Louis. Why is St. Louis so fucking familiar, bro? Oh wait. Oh wait. Oh, wait, that's right. That's right, because Marqua talked about, you know, doing stuff down there in St. Louis. And remember, I told y'all it was it was with art grants. That, that's They have a program down there in St. Louis, right? Could Gabe have been part of art grants in St. Louis? Is that why he said he's from St. Louis? Was he... Was he? Did he meet Lord Marquard at Fletch? I, I, I'm so confused. Like, where did Gabe come from and where did Miriam go? Are y'all not asking that same question? I mean, the founder, the single mama founder of a tech company, a Wi-Fi sharing app, all of a sudden, sudden just disappears, and we have Gabe. <laughs> we have Gabe. That's Gabe right there. Uh, I'm confused. Like, none of this is making any sense. But St. Louis comes up a lot, people. All right? And Mama told me that coincidence is sometimes, you know, <laughs> sometimes a fishy. All right? So it's funny that all these guys have root to St. Louis. But let's continue, Gabe. Plus entrepreneurship. 
I have a co-founder of Why Not, which is an app that allows neighbors to share their Wi-Fi for roughly $20 a month. This past week, we had the chance of going to Chicago for the U-Pitch competition, where we met a lot of other really cool student entrepreneurs with great ideas. Chicago, U-Pitch, There's so many coincidences, people. I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be a really awesome experience for not only Why Not, but also myself to be a Future Founders Fellow. Through this experience, I'll get to meet other student entrepreneurs who would help me with innovative ideas and just new concepts and uh, exploring different options. All right, all right. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, no, yeah, Gabe. Gabe's such a tool, but I don't know where I've seen Gabe before. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, so, so fucking shit. Oh, oh, God. Now I remember where I saw Gabe from. I remember where I saw Gabe from. Holy shit. <laughs> that, whoa, wait a minute now. That makes a lot more sense. The St. Louis, the, the Missouri, the all that stuff. Hey, listen, people, uh, when you dig deep into this bullshit, one thing you start to find out is that this guy's playing games with companies and investors that that's what that that's what lord marquardt is doing these guys miriam gabe him uh, uh adita right uh Dwayne or is it Dwayne or whatever fuck his name was right all you motherfuckers are playing shell games with these companies money all of y'all they were all employed by this same dude so while he was setting all that up and Fletch App was going under. He was trying to pull the same scheme he did with Fletch App. Now, you ask him on YouTube what happened to Fletch App. He says he sold the company, right? He said he sold it. It's gone. You can't hear about it because, you know, it's gone. That's usually what it means, right? Which is, okay, fine. I, I, I Assuming you sold it. Where, <laughs> we, we know that Art Grant didn't exit out of your company, so they didn't get paid. Schoolhouse Labs. They went under, so they didn't get paid. Uh, Impact, all those guys, they didn't get paid. So where's the money? Where is the rest of the money? Who cashed out? Who cashed out? Because it seemed like all y'all in the same group. Who cashed out? Where'd the money go? So you start asking yourself that question, and my ass came across randomly a YouTube video. Enjoy. Tommy, make it Who look is, like easy work. Who's next? He didn't slap JB. Oh, JB then went and he then went to food for less and traded his EBT. You know, they do a two for one. If you if you give a 50, uh, 50 EBT for uh, $25, he then came up. JB writes, quote, you keep referencing the Forbes article, even though you aren't mentioned in it. Oh, that's silly. How would he know that there's an article if I'm not mentioning it? He wouldn't be able to find my name. That doesn't make any sense. Just side note. If uh, General Tito, shout out to you for the five dollars super chat. He says, "Why is he in front of his best friend without a prospectus?" Am I behind on the chat? I'm probably behind on the chat. Yeah, I'm behind on the chat. My bad, y'all. Uh, you know, you know how I am when I go in, but uh, I don't know. He's trying to hustle for money. My boy's trying to defraud these people, and they were smart enough not to take the bait, right? Because I think they're a YouTube channel that you know, does promotions. So other investors that are watching would want to invest in new, uh, new companies. But yeah, I, I, I think they asked really good questions and my boy, he didn't know how to answer them. I mean, what kind of technologists don't like technology? That don't make no sense, bro. Like <laughs> you don't even like the work you do. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to you, man. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's continue guys pay attention to this because this was a live stream he did with angry man. And I just found this very, very interesting. I'm not mentioned in the article, you couldn't find it. So that, that lets you know he's lying. He writes, your name is just written under a pic that features the entrepreneur who's in the main feature of the art. This is sad, by the way, because this lets you know he really is looking all this stuff up. And this lets you know that it's really there. So he basically. Yeah, you're clowning people for doing their research because they're questioning your background. Oh, that that's so great. That's so great of you, Lord Mark. Well, keep, keep it up. He said, my name is under a photo on Forbes, but I'm not in the photo and I'm not in the article. That's a, a bold faced lie. My, my question, my question that's for right. JB, my question for JB is, is are you in Forbes? 
Oof. That's my question, JB. Uh, angry man, I love you, bro. But like that, that's that's not what you do, bro. <laughs> that 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 that's not what you do, dog. That that's not that's not what you do because this is not looking too good. Uh, and, and y'all don't hold this against angry man. He's a he's a good content creator, shop guy. I just don't think he understands who he's in business with. All right, because this was not a good look at all. Are you in King magazine? <laughs> are you in the source if they still make it? Like, are you in any magazine at all? And trip on this, JB. And by the way, just side note, I'm in other magazines too. You could check them out at your <laughs> leisure. I mean, that's not the only one, but check this out, JB. Let me tell you how playerific it is. And this going to hurt. Mm. And that's why I tell you guys, I only talk about one third of what I actually do just so you can hate on that third. Let me tell you how boss I am. And this, this, this going to hurt you. Oh boy. Look, angry man, trip on this. All right. The company Ooh. that's in Forbes, right? Which mm -hmm. side note, anytime you see a company in Forbes and then you never hear about it again, just side note. That usually means that it got acquired. That's that's cap, but okay. Where it got sold. You know, a bigger mm -hmm. corporation gobbled it up and they included it into what they're already doing under their brand or under a different name. That's usually what that means when you when a company's wildly successful enough to get into Forbes and then all of a sudden you don't hear about it. That's usually what that means. Just side note. Nope. There are usually news articles about it. Investors read up about it, you know, just to make, you know, daily or keep daily updates. You know, they, 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 when a company acquires another company, it's usually a kind of a big deal. You know, it's not something they just hush, hush. It's 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 gone. No, there are announcements beforehand that there's going to be a merger or and or acquisition coming. All right, and then over time, then as they're going through the deal in terms of acquisition, there's new articles being pumped out consistently about that. But the problem is when we do our research, we don't hear anything. There's no noise, no news. We don't even know who the company is that bought it. But we didn't. What we do know is the business dissolved. And what else we know is that the company in Forbes article that you're talking about is why not. OK, but you notice how he's going to wordplay it and mix Fletch into the mix without even saying Fletch. I was in Forbes about that business. I was also the CEO of another corporation that was older. So this was a newer company I started that grew so fast and was so cracking. Forbes did a spot on us. But here's the thing. Let me keep it clear. Wait a minute. Why not grew? Why not grew fast? Why not was a fast growing company? Really? Really? They don't even have a like on this video. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? Look, look, I'm gonna be your first like in years. I'm your first like in five years, my nigga. Fast growing company, my ass. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you saying, dog? This is cap. You're capping to these YouTube red pill dudes, bro. They don't know better. What are we talking about? <laughs> Get out of here. And this is the company. Why not? This is the only information we have on it. How? What do you mean it grew so fast? Uh, what, what growth are you seeing? I'm not seeing any growth, bro. You don't even have a proper YouTube channel. And the app doesn't exist. Listen, this guy over here. I saw a woman one night outside of a closed McDonald's at a local. Your audio, listen, they can't even find the app, bro. Oh boy, over here can't even find the app, dog. He can't even, he can't find the app anywhere. Like, what are we talking about? So, what grew fast? Help me understand, Saint, because what from what I from what I can see, the only article, the only company that <laughs> is in Forbes right now is why not? And that company did not grow at all. It did not do anything. The only thing that did stuff was Fletch app. That was it. And it turns out that all you motherfuckers, the usual suspects, were all migrating from Fletch app to why not? Because Fletch app was going under and you needed another parachute. So you hired Gabe. I don't know where, but you, you, you put a story around Miriam because a single mama from a Mennonite community coding, a single mother that doesn't, that's from a community that doesn't value education is all of a sudden this app developer. Make it make sense, dog. But I, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm 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 over overlooking this or, or over looking too hard into this. And this maybe is not. sharp. 
Shout out to the hustlers. Follow my moves. I am the North Star. I will show you how to get free, financially free. Pay attention. I'm the CEO of one corporation that has significant investment. Mm. If you invest into a corporation and the CEO, you definitely don't want it's them running out, two different corporations as CEO. Yep. You only want them running one corporation. Yep. So they're dedicating all their time, effort, and energy to making your money grow. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I had, I had another idea that I knew was going to be successful and I couldn't wait on it. Oh, yeah. So what I did was this. I had a girl I was dating at the time. Oh. Random white girl. Oh. No education from the middle of nowhere. No credentials. No nothing. Like a Mennonite. Mm -hmm. I positioned her on paper as the CEO of this other corporation. Oh. Then I created the new product under this new corporation. Oh, okay. You know mm -hmm. I mean? And then we put it out and it caught fire. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So when we're in, we're in Forbes, I'm positioned as the chief technology officer. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. I own percent of the corporation. I own all of the stock. Oh, mm -hmm. she's positioned as the chief executive officer. She owns mm -hmm. zero percent of the the shares she's a figurehead oh okay. so then when it's sold i got all of the bag but here's the thing i was also able to keep my my uh investors at bay because they weren't tripping because i wasn't the top dog in this other company I was that is very that, that is a very interesting set of statements that you just made bro <laughs> wait a minute because i find a bunch of errors wrong with it first things first uh we know the extent of why not it didn't do so well okay uh listen brother uh, as much as I like to support other brothers, okay, I was the first. Oh, look, 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 look. We got, we got more likes. <laughs> we got, we got more likes over here. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really. Uh, oh, no, no, no. That's the wrong video. Let's go over here. Never Hi, mind. My name is Never mind. I'm your first like in five years. So how much money did you sell? Why not at for? Because I don't believe it sold. As a matter of fact, if you look up the Dunn's number for this company, the uh, why not actually dissolved? It's not. It didn't get sold anything. Um, the company he's mid trying to mix it with, with the money and keeping his investors at bay, is Fletch App. That's it. That's the only company he made money from. That is the only company he made money from. That is the only company where he pulled the girl from a freaking Mennonite community, middle of nowhere, no fucking education. You heard it from his mouth. No education, no nothing, middle of nowhere, positioned her as a CEO while he was a chief technology officer. But we know that that's where the story ends for why not. Where the story begins, especially for the understanding of how Fletch App really went, how it went out, right? We now understand kind of what happened to the money with Fletch App. Because he was able to keep his investors at bay. How? How? There's no record of this ever getting any investors. There's no record of this ever making any kind of money. They weren't tripping about the money. What do you mean? How did you get out of that obligation, bro? That's just the question I'm asking. That's it. How did you get? Like, who, who did you keep at bay? Why weren't they tripping on that? And if you're going to start a company, wouldn't you want to accurately list who's really running it? So whoever may invest, because sometimes people make investment decisions based on who the CEO is of a company. You know that, right? If they like the personality and think that guy can lead the company into the, you know, the future, they, they'll, they'll, they'll invest. So you telling me you playing shell games with employees because all of them same employees that worked at Why Not, the CEO of Why Not apparently was an employee at Fletch. The 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 former owner, the one that developed the app for uh Why Not and magically disappeared, right? <laughs> the, the single mom that magically disappeared. <laughs> I wonder what happened to her, right? I hope she's okay. Uh but she also worked at Fletch app and then there's you. Somehow this all points back to you and we still can't figure out where the money is. But yet you over here on YouTube bragging and just snitching in a on yourself. small role as a technologist. But if you know my background, I'm not a coder. I'm not a technologist. So that no. lets you know I've always been the business guy. So that lets you know that was a power play. You did. No, so basically oh, he's really trying to uh, point out that I was like, nobody in this corporation when i was the whole puppet master the whole founder inventor and the guy who cashed out the whole thing yeah Bruh. he's 
I hope y'all caught that. Founder, investor, and the guy that cashed out the whole thing. So investors didn't get their money back, but you cashed out. Because think about it. If the company's sold, at least the investors get their cut, then you get your percentage after everyone gets paid, right? But then if you were able to keep your investors at bay and they weren't tripping about the money and then you were able to cash out, well, I don't think that's a wise investment. I don't think that's a smart thing to do because why would I invest in a company where the CEO is just going to run off with the money and I'm not like, <laughs> like nigga, ah, you pay me. Like, if anything, there should be lawsuits against you, right? But there isn't. Why? No, no, why? Why? Like, why? Listen, bro. All this tea and drama, it's enough. All right? Enough tea. Enough with the tea and drama. Enough tea, bro. Enough tea, Lord Marquardt. I am sick of it, you damn technologist capping ass nigga. Enough tea. And a T. <laughs> Can you explain it, please? <laughs> Yo, I had to do that. My ribs, my ribs. Oh no, oh no, my ribs. Ah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh shit. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. Ah, goddamn. Ah, ah, I gotta stretch more. I gotta stretch more. Fuck. Ah, uh, enough tea, bro. Enough with the tea. I'm tired of the drama, Lord Mark Wad. Where did the money go? <laughs> hey, whoever did that, bro. Hey, that's like. Master class level, bro. Hey, let's play. Let's let's play the rest of this shit. I want to go home. This level, little homie, don't even get in these waters. You would drown quick. Yeah, he's 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 trying to he's trying to explain your business to you. It's it's hilarious, man. It's hilarious. I even I even talk about that on my show. Like I I was roasting Taraji P Henson because she was complaining about not making enough money, saying that she wished she could make ten million a year. Or something like that. And I was like, yo, if I had Taraji P. Henson money to invest and do things, right? I said, Do you have any idea what I would do? And I explained to them, I said, yo, one of the most powerful moves you can do is start a business, mm -hmm. put a figurehead at it, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that, you know, for, for certain purposes, and then watch it take off. There's a reason why Robert F. Smith never showed that he was the face of his company. You know, for various reasons, but you know, you can't, you cannot explain that to uh, lumpen proletariats. That's correct. And you know, these these little uh, these small minded guys, they ain't never, you know, had a brick in the trunk and had a white girl driving it, knowing that that's the cleanest way to do it. You know, they they don't know anything. Now about he's pretending that. to be gangster. And so basically, brick in the trunk, have a white girl drive it. This white girl. <laughs> Is it this white girl driving a brick in the trunk? Okay, cool. Where's the brick, bro? Because we're trying to find the money. Where'd the brick go? Hey, wh where's Miriam? We don't know where she is. <laughs> we never heard of her. All of a sudden, she app developed the Why Not app and disappeared, and then we got Gabe. Gabe's running it now. She's gone. All right? And it's just you and Gabe. So <laughs> where's the brick? Where's Miriam? Where where did everyone go? <laughs> like, uh, what's, where's the money? Hey, 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 bitch. Where's the fucking money, dog? Uh, and that's what we're asking. We want to know where the fucking money is. And you listen, the whole time I've been asking you this, bro, you listen, you first of all, you block me. It is what it is. I don't care. I just let my audience know what the fuck I found based off of my research. OK, and this looks crazy <laughs> based, based on what I'm looking at. It, it looks it looks nuts. Like, right. But like, listen, listen, we just I'm asking where's the money? Because you on YouTube talking a whole lot of shit, bro. A whole lot of nothing. OK, we just ask some questions, bro. Where did the money go? Because see, the content creators bigger than me now that understand that you're a scammer. They understand that. But the real question is, did you scam your investors? Is that a possibility? Right? Because where's the money? How are you able to keep investors at bay while selling the company and without giving them their cut? They invested in your startup. So how were you able to keep them at bay? That's a very important question, bro. Because you ran off with the money. You just said it. You were the puppet head figure master, the whole thing. The end and the, the beginning. That was you, right? So where's the money? Yeah. I fucking thought so, bitch.
basically metaphorically speaking i had a brick in the trunk you know had a upper middle class white girl driving the car ain't nobody gonna mess with that they're gonna let that arrive at its destination and that destination is big money you heard me mm -hmm. so None of those companies made money. So this white girl with the brick in the trunk basically, you know, was a figurehead of a corporation where you potentially may have swindled tons of money. And potentially it may not even be this white girl. It could actually be this white girl that he's talking about realistically. And that's why she's probably still with him. Yeah, you didn't see that spin coming, did you, Lord Marquardt? Yeah, your boy's been thinking because Marion Martin's gone. We don't know where she is. We don't know where she went. But we do know that Bridget is still with you. So uh, metaphorically speaking, you know, who was on paper for Fletch App as a CEO? Because the only person that was connected to you via Fletch is this woman. And she is still connected to you as you moved on to Sassin Corporation. So either you're paying her really well or y'all are bonded by some kind of bond that's a little bit deeper, maybe one mired in crime, you know, because there's no deeper bond in crime. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you when you when you commit that special crime with somebody, you know, that person becomes your Bonnie to your Clyde. huh? So what's going on? So personally, I don't believe the metaphorical brick in the trunk he's talking about is uh, Miriam Martin. I, I believe, and I genuinely believe, it's Bridget Dorsal. Bridget Dorsal, on paper, for his Fletch Company app, Fletch App Company, the main one he was getting money from, was probably on paper for something pretty big. And that's how he was able to get away. So let him just keep snitching, bro. Don't ever try to hate on a boss when you don't understand the boss's chess moves. Just sit back and clap at the end when I say checkmate. You hear me? But don't try to criticize what you don't understand. And then he said, prove me wrong. I'll send 200. Well, you already been proved wrong. Go ahead and send my bread, little homie. But here's the thing. The funny comical part is about your $200. That wouldn't even cover my meal check. But what I might do with it is I might tip somebody on the come up. You feel me? I might tip somebody a little extra money because uh, they on their way up. And that's a beautiful thing. So go ahead and really look at that Forbes article, read through it and do me a favor. Google the name of the CEO. She's invisible. She doesn't exist because she was just a figurehead. I'm the one <laughs> that did that. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering that question because I was wondering where Miriam went, you know, the same chick that followed you from Fletch and also the same chick who was the uh, CEO of Why Not, the app developer, you know, the single mama app developer. But you're right because I've been researching her. I've been trying to find Miriam. Matter of fact, I thought she was Bridget for the longest time. But she wasn't. I thought she was just like she was. I thought she was Bridget, but she was like she changed her name to Miriam. That's who I thought it was. But it turns out Bridget was another woman. Bridget is the woman he's still with. We don't know where Miriam went. And he just answered it for us. Why we can't find her? Because she's a nobody. She wasn't even an app developer. She doesn't even have any background whatsoever. My boy's playing games with a company's money, bro. The same woman with no app experience, no development experience, no nothing whatsoever was working at Fletch. And then he moves her from Fletch to Why Not? And all of a sudden she's gone and we got Gabe. But then Gabe was also at Fletch. And now he's talking about breaking the trunk, let a white girl drive it. There's just there's just too many questions, bro. Like you, there, there, there's something that's not straight here. And I don't, I'm not admitting to know all the answers. I'm just presenting what I found. And right off the bat, it just seems kind of fishy because we've already proven based off of your own sales pitch from your mouth. Listen, based off of your own sales pitch, Fletch app isn't going to make any kind of money whatsoever. So we know it didn't sell. We know it dissolved. It went belly up. And we know for a fact it didn't sell because none of those companies that invested in you exited. At all. They didn't get any profits whatsoever. Whatever was wrapped up, whatever funds was left over, gone. And yet you're over here talking about brick in a trunk, let a white girl drive it, keep your investors at bay while you cash out.
cash out, cash out, meaning cleaning house. That's very, very interesting choices of words there you're using. And I know you're a smart guy, Lord Marquardt. You know how to structure your words very well. So that's very interesting you put it that way. You know, one just has the question, are you mixing things together? You know, maybe mixing companies, mixing storylines, right? Because we really didn't we really didn't know what happened to those companies, right? But now we know you magically popped up on YouTube, right? Right off the fresh uh flat app can't uh goes belly up, you'll be accounting hundred and fifty thousand dollars live on camera when a YouTuber calls you out because you acting like a fake pimp, which by the way, I still haven't gotten an answer of uh in when since you went to community college at 16 to John Hopkins, in between when were you a pimp or were you a pimp before that? Because you were 16 when you went to community college, right? So <laughs> where where did you find the time to be a pimp, bro? So we, we you see what I'm saying, Lord Marquardt? There's so many holes in your story, it's not even funny. And now you're challenging a big content creator that could do way worse damage than you. You're crazy, dog. You understand that, right? You're not, you are not, you are absolutely not ready for this work. And guys, if you go, if you go to his channel. This dude doesn't know how to take an L, all right? He does not know how to take an L because when you go to this guy's channel, this guy has a video coming up. Hold up. I think I just passed it. Wait, what the fuck is he wearing? What the fuck is that, bro? What the fuck is this? What is this shit? This dude's so weird, bro. Bro, <laughs> this is such a sus look. Um... He has a live stream coming up. You know, he's definitely not caught chasing at all, right? And he's caught, he's doubling down on a racist part. So, guys, this saga is not over. We're going to see what happens after tomorrow when Lord Marquardt does his thing. If he actually has the balls to, you know, clap back at Destiny. And we want to know, what is he going to say, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to full screen this, right? Let's see what people are saying in this chat right now. <laughs> Enough tea, bro. I'm, I'm with you, dog. Yo, <laughs> he's still getting trolled. <laughs> enough tea. Enough tea. <laughs> well, there's a review of a debate. Where is the actual debate? I don't see it posted on this channel. Yeah, because he took it down, Dan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. He took it down. Uh that uh, that's pretty much it. But uh yeah. So the saga is not over. <laughs> We're going to figure out tomorrow Lord Marquardt's response to this entire bullshit and if Destiny is going to respond, right? Guys, I'm not going to lie. I I'm liking this drama. <laughs> Come on, guys. You're not going to say you're liking this? I am loving this drama, bro. So Lord Marquardt, this is going to be a very interesting showdown, all right? I'm curious to see how you maneuver after that beating you took at the last live stream. And is he going to take this one down, guys? You guys want to place bets on this? Is Lord Marco going to take this stream down? All right. I, I'm going to put $100 up right now. <laughs> we could probably set up a bet right now and run something. All right. Because he, he definitely took the last one down. And all the other subsequent streams where I called him out or he tried to call me out with false information, he took all that stuff down. So he might. He actually might. We don't know, guys. So this is all to be determined. I will see you guys on the next one. All right. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way in and your way out. I appreciate you being here. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. Peace.